the forge has gone quiet, the bellows blow no more. The forge has gone quiet, the smiths have gone home. Only fading embers remain, and my hearth grows cold. One kiss from you to rekindle it all. More important, we're playing Spy Hunter RPG. Welcome to our table. Hi. Um, Hi. I, I, I don't have any news to share this week. Cool. We don't have any sponsorships to talk about. Um, but I do want to play Queen of Embers. I think everybody else does too. So yeah. let's let's dive right in. So last week, um, Walter was out, who plays Jonathan Vander. Let's maybe refresh our memories. Like what? So at the at the if, we, if you recall from the let's actually just walk right back to the point where Walter had to leave. Um, so what happened at the beginning of the game session? Uh, where did we start? We started on the boat. We did. We were learning more about the boat. And, yes. And uh, yeah, there's what some interesting the uh, developments there. There's been some uh, rigging, some uh, messing around, tinkering. He rigged the boat so basically uh, the basically, boiler can move it. <clears throat> right, it basically has an, yeah. it has an engine now. Yep. It has a mystery machine engine. <laughs> Zoink, Scoobs, get the battle line! <laughs> yeah, so Sammy has been working on the battle line. What else happened? We came to the conclusion that the boat technically didn't really belong to anyone at this point, which was yeah. kind of interesting. Like, on a, as a side note, more than anything. But well, technically, I think it it was Wolfgang that bought it. So it's Wolfgang, and then he was gonna let the Baroness give it away, right? Yeah. So it's weird. It's like, yeah, this is a weird question of ownership. Like, who actually owns this? And Sammy's like, we do. We're like, all right. And so then we decide to let's uh, try to get this thing actually like river worthy because it was never really made to be actually used in the water, but it's there. So they're gonna pull it out. They're gonna try to make it ship shape. The and calkers, calkers that you hired. Yeah, we need some cash for calkers. We need cash for calkers. <laughs> <laughs> it's a pay a lot of scheme. <laughs> and so. We got that set up, and then we decided uh, we need to get into the uh, restricted area of the city because reasons. Uh, and then we went to talk to our favorite type of person. Uh, yes, we went to talk to Mrs. Booker? Baker? Rewind. Candlestick maker or something? You forgot. <laughs> Ward and Banneker had a nice little talk. <laughs> I wasn't there for that, so I didn't know that talk. <laughs> I, I, my character wasn't there for that. Warren revealed his devil's mark on his back, which gave some credence to the fact that well, he hears voices. And not only that, you said, and she takes over sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> Those were your exact words. I was like, what? what, what? what? <laughs> he also said Terra was blowing him off. Mm hmm. Yeah. And Terra was like, I'll listen to you. I'll be here. <laughs> and then he was like, and then Warren was like, he blew me off. Okay. Blew I'll, him off. <laughs> I'll take care of myself. I'll be your Huckleberry. I'll be your <laughs> I believe you did that when you were both on the shitter. Yeah. We did. Uh, <laughs> the shitter is the only place you get privacy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Found some privacy on the shitter. Mm -hmm. yeah. Shared shared privacy. In the, so, water, the water the water closet. Water closet. Yeah, so we had that and I was trying to talk him into maybe revealing to somebody who actually knows something more about this than I do. <laughs> and we got interrupted of course. <laughs> so we walked in and was trying. So yeah, that's then we uh, went to see your Galore Knight. Right. 
Uh, Jonathan, it's actually Jonathan. Made, Jonathan made the introduction to Josephine Booker for you all, and you had met her. Oh, we met her um, at her at her home. What happened during that that conversation? <laughs> I got hot. Her and Terry got along slim, swimmingly. <laughs> Drowningly or swimming? She out Banniger Banniger. What did you what, yeah? What did you learn about Josephine Booker during that conversation? She's in a war night. <laughs> I've been told by my father, the paladin, that I should not Great. speak ill of people. Uh, <laughs> so I shall not say anything. She has a really loud and annoying clock in her in her God, house. She does. <laughs> so there's a clock, there's what we learned that basically she's her family and her have been part of this city for a very long time. She has a brother who's trapped in the uh, district we're at, and basically, other than that, she's a historian and she's really full of herself. She's a Rovanian separatist. She desperately needed her help, but wanted yes, to get that's his, right. She's yeah. a Rovanian separatist. She desperately wanted our help, but wanted to get as much as she could out of this, out of us as well. Right. Wait, so she wants night. to be separate from Helco? <laughs> she does not. Did she want to? I what thought she did not all, want to be. read on her. She does. It was that she wants to stay under the king somewhat. So okay. That's my read that I okay. got. Okay. Right. So she wouldn't really be for separation. She. No, she's all about separating you guys. She wants. She wants nothing to do se- with you ever. She wants segregation. Oh, segregation! Yeah. Oh. That's Romanians on one side, the Aryan on the she other. She did, however, give us devil's lettuce, which I am still trying to figure out my. What's gonna happen? The devil's lettuce. <laughs> yeah. So remember to reduce your initiative by three. If you oh, spoke something. second city. Second city. The second city. She was part of the second city. Is the second city. I remember that being a huge thing. Repeatedly. <laughs> she also had a bunch of wicker masks. She did. She had a bunch of tribal artifacts. Which is part of her historian thing. Yeah. Edward is her brother that we're trying to get. Yep. He is a book dealer. Yeah. What else did you learn about Edward? Edward is deals in scissor hands. <laughs> he deals as a scissor maker. <laughs> He's a scissor maker. His friend he deals is in uh, what? What was the what was the finally stated word you used? I can't remember. Rare books. Rare antiquities. books. Antiquities. 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 But, but realistically, he deals He's in shit that the uh, <laughs> um, the the church frowns on. Yeah. Which is really what came out at the very end. Like he's basically trapped because right. he deals in things that he shouldn't, um, and the crazy Elora Knight, um, uh, the what's the TV Evangeline, that we're Evangeline, Evangeline Falwell. Yeah, Falwell, one of the Falwell kids, <laughs> has grown up and took over the empire. <laughs> God, please. No. Sounds like they fell well. Uh, yeah. So that's that's it. What else um, did you learn about? Who is Edward Worth working with? Jonah. Oh, he's working with my boy, Jonah. His name is Jonah. Thanks for all you showed me. How about covers it? I got that one. I can't believe Mike did. Oh, we found out skinny people could pass through bars. That's right. So. Oh, yeah, yeah. We, yeah. She's leading us to a path that can get us there, besides the fact that it's locked. The entire way. <laughs> yeah, she did. She did indicate that uh, some number of years ago, ten years almost, I should say, uh, when the bastard king had sacked Kael Tyrion, that he used a series of old mines, gypsum, old gypsum mines beneath the city, uh, what's now called the Undercroft. Um, but that's how they snuck in whenever the whenever King Cassandra Malister took Kael Tyrion back and executed bastard king, he ordered all of the undercroft to be sealed. But didn't Ethan do the same thing? Because he was like, I don't want this to happen to me. Uh, he did not. That was his uh, critical flaw. But the city was sacked from above. Right. Yeah. His people turned on. Pretty much. That's right. Not a bastard king. But a bastard. Um, I, so... I do have a question before yes. we go. The bastard king is um, <laughs> Would it be possible for Elisa to pick up a set of lockpicks before we go into it? Sure. I think because, obviously, Walter was gone, so Jonathan, we actually spent a little bit of time uh, doing a bit of shopping beforehand. 
So if you like to go back through and just kind of correct anything that you would like that you may have done before you descended, because we literally left off when mm -hmm. they were descending down the well in her backyard to go to the undercroft. That's where we stopped. Gotcha. I don't have any more. Oh yeah, you wouldn't have gotten a reward. I'm not technically a member of the Dufresne Agency. I'm just sort of a hanger on at this point. <laughs> <clears throat> Just cool. I'm going to keep going under attack. that to auspices and see if anybody ever knows. <laughs> you're in Josephine. <laughs> right now, the menu screen is up for shopping as you're sitting in the secret garden of Josephine Booker. It's winter, but the birds are still chirping. Snow dusts everything. <laughs> Don't use those elixirs, because you never use elixirs. They're, they're starlings and pigeons, right. which never fucking leave. What a horrible night to have a curse. What a horrible night to have a curse. <laughs> I need to pull up my phone PDF so I can look at the price of lockpicks. Phone PDF? Me a moment. You mean you have a Zwyander phone PDF on I your phone? I certainly that you're using? do. You know, I could probably find it in this player's handbook. You know, I have. I, is my player's well, handbook over there in that house? Yeah, yeah they're they're going for everybody. I, I brought more. <laughs> this player's handbook? The 372 page uh, new version for players? It's four for, gold crowns. That's, that's right. It's currently four, four pre order on Amazon. Two turtle doves. In fact, I'll be doing an no, unboxing for this. Cool. Just okay. don't tear cool. the sheets out the back, or if you're doing an unboxing video, I'm gonna tear them out. <gasps> Can I attempt a barter on the? Absolutely. I seem to recall you critically succeeded last time. I did. Yes. Yeah. Okay. It's a new game, new role. Uh, your character sheets what's your the social cost? The, uh... Uh, burger. Yep. Burger. Landscape ones too. In case you're into that. I don't know who it is, but I don't fancy. Yeah. Ooh. I actually like landscape characters. Who's that? Who's that on the stairs? They smell nice. Just the house troll. <laughs> <laughs> I did pay the troll toll. Troll toll. <laughs> to get into AKA, the... No. We had a check. <laughs> okay, what's my difficulty since I'm a bird? My apologies. Uh, okay. you're, uh, are you... Oh, you're from here, so your difficulty will be easy. Easy. You are a Romanian. So that gives me a 62%, a 23 will do it. Nice. What's your fellowship yeah. bounce? Five. Okay, reduce it by 20%. So 20% would mean... Oh <clears throat> yeah, because last game session, Elisa actually bought a skill rank outside of her profession, which the new player's handbook actually goes into great detail about how you can buy skill ranks outside of your profession if you pay double and get the Game Master's approval. Available for pre-order right now on Amazon.com. <laughs> <laughs> or by the time this video comes out, available right now on Amazon. Yeah. yeah <laughs> by the time it comes out, available right now. Uh, <laughs> Let's be honest here. Mm -hmm. Yep. Hey, I so think the rest of us just basically got like pots. So, and so Mike, do you want to go uh, half season gold some, force? some rubber? Because Mo needs one too. Oh, uh, yeah. I, mean, I, I can probably get them to give it to us for free. <laughs> you do work there, right? <laughs> yeah. We'll see what we can do. We'll see what we can do. All right. All right. Well, I'll go half these if you want to. All right. Is there anything else you wish to do before you, you descend down into the well beneath Josephine Baker's house into the underground? They, they Booker. Yeah, I can't save it. <laughs> can't just buy one. <laughs> anything <laughs> remaining? Anything going, going? Uh, gone. No. So. I want a pile. War machine? What kind of I'll buy a pickle gun. Pickle gun. I want to buy a pickle gun. It shoots pickles. From the pickle dealer. The pickle dealer. <laughs> Let me go talk to my friend. Tobias Strozzi has a pickle gun. Yeah, he's got pickle guns. He fires it in the stadium. He's <laughs> really salty. <laughs> they have emulate quality, so you're kind of fun. <laughs> a tunic cannon. A tunic, tunic cannon. It's good. Hmm. <laughs> Potato gun. This is just sounding like a pair of leggings and you get a pair of leggings. Junket rocket launcher. The rock rocket. It's the rocket. It, but they called it something else before. I don't remember. Mm -hmm. So if there's nothing else that you wish to do, nope. Josephine will certainly usher you down the well. Given that her house guests, as she taps her her stopwatch, her her pocket watch. Are coming in ten minutes, so you must usher your way down below. 
Um, for the lock picks, do those just give me the ability to attempt a lock pick, or does that give me a bonus? It gives you the ability to attempt the lock pick. Okay. All right. So I think I was heading down first. All right. So, so water's not necessarily important at this point. And I do remember she said, "Walk away from the light." That's right. Yep. Don't go towards the light. You descend down this round stone well, and as you look, and you're descending down this kind of ladder that's been iron made of iron fashioned into the well, like it was made specifically for this purpose. You, as you look up toward the hole, this kind of gray, this kind of gray sphere with snow falling down above, you come down into the undercroft. And as your feet settle up on the earth, there's a soft kind of pitter-patter of splashing. As you can see, there's loose brick all along the floor and along this tunnel. It doesn't appear to be hewn from stone at all. It appears that brick and stone has been laying everywhere. And in fact, not far from here, you can see what looks like a, an ossuary, an inlet in the stone itself. And you can see a skeleton or two kind of stuffed within as skulls are lining the edge of it. Reminding you of the catacombs of Paris. The light from <laughs> your lantern? Who has the light? I have a lantern. And I will use one of my oil lights. The light from the lantern Wheels. glistens off of the water that's clearly seeping from between the stone and rock. You can see that there's quite a bit of there's quite a bit of buildup along the walls, uh, thing, kind of small bits of grass and whatnot, and moss that grow between the stones. But the stone hallway here in particular is probably at the height of this room, maybe nine feet at best. About as wide as this table, a good four, four and a half feet. Not precisely wide, but not narrow either. Not narrow to walk to abreast. Your light kind of shines one way and then the opposite into the darkness. Alright. Alright. Uh, well, Lisa, didn't you uh, end up getting one of them uh, compasses? Oh, yes. She pulls it out. Alright. Not sure what good it's going to do. I mean, we have a general vague idea of the direction, I suppose. But, um, right. Well, direction are we supposed to be in? Uh, that's a good question. West, I guess? What direction is Almeron's gates from uh, Josephine's house? I probably have a pretty good idea of that. Mm -hmm. I would assume I would as well. Those you are both live in the city. <laughs> it's it is without it's west. That's what I thought. Toward the setting sun. All right, <coughs> but the tunnel goes north and south. <coughs> you just and keep an eye on that south. thing and try to make sure we keep on going some level west. Right. Uh, uh, I'll have it out. So one hand or cane, the other hand. Okay. The, um, and I'll walk away from the lights, so north or south, whichever way that is. Actually, as we make turns, I'm going to use chalk to kind of... You've made no turns yet. You're still trying to determine which direction to right. go, just to be clear. Right. Um, you dim the lantern. Right. And down one tunnel, you can see light coming from above. And down another tunnel, you can see light coming from so, the way I believe she was descri described it was hers was the last one at the end of the street, right? Mm -hmm. So, okay. So, maybe her directions weren't as clear as we had hoped. Um, Alright, so, yeah, uh, if there's light both ways, then, well, north and south. Any ideas? So, if, it's, if she were on the end of the street, and uh, we should head towards the front of the street, where it connects. Um, From up above, you know what I mean? Well, I don't think so. Eh, who cares? Choose one direction, let's find something that goes east and west. Yeah, if it stays light, we're in the wrong direction. Possibly. If it gets dark, we're in the right direction. I mean, taking her at her word, yes, but do we necessarily believe that she's navigated this way? I find that she appeared to be entirely trustworthy. 
Right. I suppose we could just stand still and close our eyes. It's kind of what I, I mean. Now. I say north. Good enough for you. I really wish to go north by. All right, well, let's but do it. Let's go north. But I went south, so I say north it is. Good enough reasoning. Following the compass that Elisa has, as she kind of pulls it up and it kind of shines, this brass and this brass magnetic apparatus that seems to indicate these old kind of Dominican Sans font letters, north, south, east, and west, and these different radials in between, along, along with these different symbols, of course, beneath each that depict each of the common layers of the zodiac through the four seasons. So, take the chalk and mark on the wall which direction we're going. Yeah. So you take the chalk and score it several what? times, Elisa, to ensure... Or who's going to mark the walls? Elisa, you're leading. It sounds like you and... Well, I'll mark you the walls. And... Okay. Yeah, do my piece of chalk, then. So, well, you, you said there was a ton of it when you bought it. Yeah, mm-hmm. so, so she just handed it. There's enough for... So I'll mark it, and then what is... What is this ridiculous woman's name again? So to be clear, just me? with a lantern, you've got one direction of light. I'll put JB up, and then this direction of where we're going. Okay. So once again, to be clear, the lantern you have is not a storm lantern, so it's a single direction light. So they want to stand at the back with their own light? That's right. You not go ahead. <coughs> I'll bring out the veil. So I'll take out my <coughs> lantern and light it. Okay. Alright. Turin strikes a torch and you can feel the warmth on the back of your neck. From the heat. In fact, down here it's it's the, it's more temperate than it is above because it is winter. You can feel a cold breeze pass as you're heading north. And where you see that light coming from above appears to probably be from another well. As you pause beneath it and look up at this kind of round stone cylinder with this, with a broken, it looks like a broken um, ladder that would descend, that would descend up. And of course, snow is kind of falling through this gray disc above as it slowly comes down and doop, up on the end of your nose. Bander. Jonathan. You see, however, not far from here, the path terminates. Stops? It does. Boss, turn around, I chose poorly. Unfortunately, we're going south towards Rovania. We actually chose very well. Because now we won't be wandering. True. It didn't take us very long, so I will, I guess, Make way so that we can like, you know, do, do like line. that, do like that old school vid- uh, video game, like worms that uh, snakes yeah, that keep everybody's following. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You only like, cast spells on your left foot, by the way. <laughs> it's the Ultima Square. So yeah. Like, yeah. Like, right, like, so <laughs> when I get back to the markings, I'll put end. Okay. For that way. Pointer arrow this way. You begin to go forward, and. The lantern immediately illuminates no more than 15 feet in front of you. The tunnel continues forward, still, into darkness. And then you can also see a branching path that would uh, go west from here. So you can continue going south, or you can go west. Well, this is the general direction. West is where we need to go, right? Yes. Yeah. Do we trust the Alorinets? Sure. Well, no, I, I trust having walked to that place. And I trust you. Let's do that. So I will that mark to make sure we know which direction we're going. Yes. And mark back. Elisa is casually using like her cane, her, you know, cane to kind of tap to make sure there's no like loose spots or any kind of hazards on the ground since I can't see it very well. And then I'll stop and also make sure Taron understands my system. <laughs> Just in case I don't make it back, you know what this is. Yeah. <laughs> Got it. All right. <laughs> so you you go about 10, 15 feet, and the light from Harper's or Herber's lantern Herber's. 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 reaches this. It's a very tall, vaulted, long 
hallway. And before you can go any further, there's actually these iron gates that run floor to ceiling that have been fastened with bolts into the tunnel. And in the middle of the gates is this small iron door where you can see this this kind of what looks like a, an iron handle where you open it up, independent of the actual framework of the of the gates that run floor to ceiling. So there's a, there's a, basically a door, and the light is kind of filtering through these long bars of light extend beyond, and you can see these these uh, where the dead have been interred, uh, as there are skulls only piled up along the floor to the ceiling beyond us. This is clearly some sort of ossuary. You hear the screeching of rats every once in a while. Then the floor is a little bit wet here, but not much. I bet you she had a key and didn't want to give it to us. Well, she didn't tell us there was a catacomb. It is a possibility that this is the correct way, but it seems the correct direction. Oh, well, yeah, I mean, it's just bones. Oh, I'm not worried about that. Yeah. I'm just stating it's not something she mentioned, and you think it would have been something she could have mentioned. But then again... <laughs> Probably <laughs> rats at you. Yeah, it's, it's like an alone I'm going to tell you you wouldn't understand, and then I'm going to half explain it to you so that you don't understand, and then say, see, I knew you wouldn't understand. That seems fairly accurate. Mm -hmm. Is it locked? You approach. The iron kind of rattles in itself, but it's clearly locked. But there's no rust built up on the bolts that fat that fix it into into the bars that run floor to ceiling. This door has clearly been opened and closed by people who have passed through here. Hmm. Not a spot of rust on those bolts at all. Curious. Well, we I mean, know it's well traveled. Could be a bad thing. Hey, now. Nah. You think. Alright. I'm going to look at myself and go, okay, I didn't like her, so I think she's the worst. Maybe I'm wrong. You don't think she would send us down here to die? Yeah. Oh, yes. No, I mean, where, where are we supposed to get her brother at? If we stood in the way of some knowledge, who cares if she actually had a brother, even? I mean, what it is an allure Oh, okay, okay. What do you think, Jonathan? In regards to which subject? It seems there are three there. Yeah, 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 okay. Um, whether or not Josephine may have ill intentions towards us by sending us this way. Did she have a brother? <laughs> I don't think so. Okay. All right. Yeah. You know, uh, I have to. There would be much easier ways to dispatch of us than to uh, send us through the uh, a catacomb underneath our home. That seems elaborate. Okay. But she could have just called the city guard. Yeah. I mean. All right. I know myself. I know I've got my. Biases. Yeah. All right. She doesn't particularly care for me, but that being said, oh, she told not us. Really or so. She was first in the class, and you were pitiful second. Yes. Well, whatever. Disgustingly is, second. Whatever is not valedictorian. Well, you could put that in one hand and piss in the other, and I can tell you which will fill up first. No, we agree with you. We tried to explain that she said this is the second greatest city under yeah. the father, the great father, or whatever. And I said, "Oh, so you're 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 the salute Victorian of the." Uh. That's it. <laughs> she did. She did not take that quite as well. That's funny. <sighs> Jonathan, sometimes that wit comes out, and sometimes I think I'm pretty much just like that woman. So are we going to get past She's not so bad. Um, I could take a crack at it. Well, um, it ain't open, right? Elise drops down up on one knee and... Make sure that we get out of the light in there. Yeah, yeah. The, t the tunnel is fortunately widened at this point, broad enough for two people to stand abreast. I'll, uh, I'll, I'll bring a lantern closer to light her way. You get a torch. 
The good news is the. Oh, do you? Yeah. They both have. Oh, good, good. Good. Okay. Yeah. The light kind of breaks through the bars, and you can see the the shadows shift here and there, giving almost the illusion of movement among the rim remains of those who were who were placed in here, for lack of a better term. You don't see any religious iconography whatsoever, just skulls and bones stacked neatly along the side and fixed into the brick. You lean down and begin this <clears throat> working your picks. It will be a um, challenging skullduggery test. Okay. Skullduggery! It's a fail forward test. Alright, so that gives me a 55 at skullduggery, so 45. Mm-hmm. And Ot Nine will do it. All right then. The door Quink. pops open. Oh, Places see. it back into this leather wrap. Seems I remember something from my childhood breaking out. That's useful. <laughs> Your childhood was spent breaking out. Occasionally, if you met my father, sometimes I had to get out. Uh, you know what? I don't. I don't think I've actually met him. I saw him from very far across at the field a few times. He's an admirable asshole. That's the best way I'd probably put it. Uh, I know you say an admiral. My, my grandfather just whenever, you know, the nicknames you have for one another, he, whenever he would come up, he would say, oh, warning shots, not words. Yes. Yes, yes he had that engraved at home. Right, so let's uh, head on through then to the other side. You pass through the gates and... Should we lock this again or should we put something in place so we can... It looks like it's shut, but we can pull it open. That's a good idea. You don't need to be bringing attention to it now. Well, I don't have a wax kit to make us another key, so uh, if I die, you might get stuck down here, but we can relock it. What's wrong? No, 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 no. I'm meaning... Is there a locking mechanism to it? No. He wants to prop it open in a way that it appears latched. But That's exactly what I was meaning. Well, we could do that. The, the second they try to pull on the door, they'll know better. There's, to be clear, the, the way that the locking mechanism works is if you close the if you close the gate, it will lock itself. There is no unlock mechanism on the other side. So it's like a... It's simply, once it latches, it, once it closes, clink, it, it's, it's locked. So I think he's trying to get so it to where it's like propped open to where it's almost closed, but isn't. Yeah, so what I'm going to do is take some cloth, tie it around the end that you were talking about, would go into the sink, mm-hmm. shut it, but the cloth actually holds the sink. Roll a trivial skullduggery test. I don't think he intends for the... Uh, oh, can I roll it? Or I'm not going to roll anything. I'm trying to explain... Yeah, go ahead roll. I don't know how to do any of this. So, I just, um, just let me take a look at the mechanism and see what I'm Thinking that this would be a better plan uh, than... Uh, trivial, you see. Mm-hmm. So I have a sixty-five percent chance. And, oh wait, fifty-five. Oh, it's eighty-five, and I rolled a fifty-eight. So okay. we're good. Clink. All right, it isn't fully shut. It'll open. You test it. It opens and closes as, as needed. We'll shut the clock. Yeah, I mean, just you know, it's just a thought. Oh, it, it won't hold up to close observation, but it doesn't need to. What difference does it make? Just leave it open. I, I don't know. If at a glance someone right. happens to pass, just we've go. spent enough time on this. Let's move on. The Walking Dead will be very disappointed in our impolite manners. Yes. <laughs> As you're passing down this tunnel, just thoughts. The the you leave the gates behind. It's a very very long passageway, and you find that for the most part it's intact, tall, vaulted, lined with brick like this. With the in with the with the uh, in insets like such, where bones and skulls are lining, and it is deathly quiet here, save for your footfalls and a few drippings of water here and there. But you realize there's hundreds and hundreds of remains that have been interred here, and you can't help but get just a little bit of maybe a little bit of a goose pimples. So everyone needs to make a routine resolve test, unless you have indifference. Yep. Red first. 56. 64. Yeah. 24. 23. What was it? The standard? Routine. 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 Oh, okay. Thumbs up, soldier. Anybody fail? 
he found. Yeah. It's it's a bit creepy. You gain three corruption, and you will suffer uh, three mental peril. All right. So you're suffering from stress. Do you have any disorders? No. I do. Lost heart. Yeah. Despair sets in. There's that symbol above his head, like the darkest dungeon. Whatever it is, like despair. <laughs> what happens whenever you suffer from just fear or terror? Mm -hmm. uh, uh, those affected with this disorder must reduce all damage they do by their fellowship bonus for either one, two, or three hours, depending on the severity of their madness. One hour. Okay. And then there's if we get into combat, I'll bring up the rest of it. <clears throat> how does how does Harper react to this? Uh, so Harper would be thinking like. I guess the association he would go is like the love I think that the Baron has for Baroness would have for me right now is dead, essentially, because I failed her so miserably. And so it's just that I don't know. Just imagine himself and how he just without the Baroness's love, he just might as well be dead. Is it maybe kinda of like that failing and the death of the barrister then do you think? Yeah, the barrister. So since I failed, basically <clears throat> the goal was to get her here to see to the secession and to you know see to the elevation of my queen essentially I feel a strange familiarity with these corpses as they are like uh, the love between the baroness and me right <laughs> Harper is the most what is the devil <laughs> and that's when you realize as Harper kind of stops his eyes are drawn toward this inscription above one of the one of the the sepultures and it says this is death's empire in ancient old huh. and that's when you begin to notice there are these I don't call them rudimentary but there are these there are these inlays in the stone that seem to depict this woman with this very long sweeping dress uh, who is walking in a field over her shoulders, this long two-handed scythe. And as you're kind of passing, you can see that the, the, the whole thing's telling a story, and this whole story continues for literally like almost a almost hundred yards. And when you get about halfway through, she's reaping the, the children from, or the children in the old, from the fields. As you can see, these heralds descending from heaven that look like that look like angels with skulls in place of their faces who are bearing burning swords. And the relief continues deeper and deeper as you go until you realize that um, the children and old people are now in, they're below the earth and they're standing before her throne. And without a doubt, this is clearly supposed to be the custodian, um, a, a god of a sort that was once, I wouldn't say worshiped, but certainly paid tribute to by the Alorinites as they were in the second age uh, were also attendants of the dead. And you can see that kind of a throng of people bearing robes and these what looks like, you know, like the Julius Caesar's kind of crown of, of leaves. They seem to wear the traditional um, uh, priest robes and regalia that the Elornites would wear in the Second Age. Although they mostly abandoned that style of arraignments, they mostly just wear the tall neighborhood collars and the long kind of dress looking like robes now, almost looking like wizards. Uh, with pants. Harry Potter? Yeah. Uh, like Snape. So yeah. Snape. It's exactly what they dress like. They dress in plain black like they're Puritans um, with the with the white collars. But um, they, they do seem to have that kind of semblance of familiarity, particularly to you, Jonathan, being that being a graduate of the Lyceum, which is one of the foremost schools of the Elorites, um, you would recognize this because even today, um, the faculty still dresses in the ancient raiments of the Elorites. Eventually, this this com this story comes to a stop, uh, and you come to another set of iron gates. It's been about twenty minutes at this point. The, the, at this point, the, 
the, the, the hall is wide and tall and vaulted, and you can see all still all the skulls stacked in different ways, along with the rib cages and the bones and the femurs and other like finger bones are kind of laying in like concentric circles uh, on the ground and have clearly been disturbed over the years. Although you take it, you gingerly walk among them, perhaps maybe you kick them around. I don't know. Um, but uh, you're clearly walking on holy ground, uh, old holy ground, in fact, where literally at this point, countless numbers of remains have been interred here, and the bones have been stacked in strange ways, uh, not artful, but grim and macabre by our, by our modern minds, like the catacombs of Paris. Right. Um, you come to another iron gate with a door in it. Before, wait, before I'm gonna I'm gonna talk to Warren. I'm gonna be like, should, should, should we? He was he went to that school. Ask him. No? No, no. He knows about this stuff. Do you see shit like this? He covets it. Okay. Is that who you see? I don't see anything. He looks toward the ceiling where it's vaulted, and you do feel an absence, Warren. You feel an absence of her sight. The Leviathan's eye does not shine down upon you. And it would be, even in, during the winter, you would still see that burning blue star uh, that encircles all of Bahama, along with the strange rings of stone that can be seen at night twinkling. You feel an absence of her presence. You come to the gate. Clearly it has been locked, but like the previous gated door, it, too, has no rust upon its hinges, where it is affixed firmly into the iron, almost resembling, like, dungeon gates. Like, they're about as thick as your arm. They cannot easily be bent. Somebody who is um, frail could slip between them, maybe? Harper is an example. You look, like, skinny from uh, Breaking Bad. He's like... I'm like six <laughs> foot one as well. Yeah, so I'm super tall. Skin. <laughs> you look creepy. <laughs> Corpse like. You come to the gates. Elisa, will you attempt to unfix them? Will you all do anything else before she does so? Uh, shiver. <laughs> Some kind of. You don't, you don't think they was buried like this? As I point to the circles of fingers and I'll look at like Warren and Jonathan and Lisa. No. I think it's got nothing to do with this boss. I want to get the fuck out of here. Right. I just I don't want to be stumbling into something we shouldn't when we go through this door. We shouldn't be here. So you think getting through right. this door is a good idea? Yeah. Very. Or okay. is it a better idea to go back? Are you saying there could be something Ooh. bad on the other no, side? No, no, no. I'm just. If, well, I'm just saying it's against the law to be down here. If any of you know something about this, as I specifically <laughs> point to the finger bones that have been arranged, it'd be good to know. Just, just saying. Uh, are you wondering if this is uh, ritualistic or significant in some way? Is that what you're asking? Yes. I'll take a look. Give me a light. I'll uh, bring a light over. Uh, let's get to the door. You lean down with the really lantern. If I was in this water panther, then play with this. I figure we can probably do both simultaneously. We can look at this while she's yep. doing the lock. So, Lisa, go ahead and make a challenging skill dagger test first. Fail forward. It takes like a good 10 minutes. To... I guess it just takes time yeah. to actually unlock it. Mm -hmm. yeah. 31 will do it. Okay. So, As you hear this thing, clink sound as the door unlocks, Jonathan leans down at the lantern. He's kind of looking at you. Can see the concentric circles of the finger bones and the way that the, the long leg bones have been laying along the wall, almost resembling what looks like a ladder of bones, kind of running all the way up and down the wall where you can't even see the brick. There's so many bones here. It's 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 it's, it's, it's insane. The, uh, the the rib cages have been placed inside and stacked neatly, almost like barrels. Um, inside the inside the os inside the sepultures. Go ahead and make a trivial folklore test, Jonathan. All right. Trivial folklore is or education. Sixty-five. Use education. 
That is trivial as 65 is 85. It is 105% chance. 99. <laughs> uh, critical success with a 77. Okay. Nice. <laughs> Jonathan, what do, you make, what do you make of this, Walter? And that will be what the that will be the fiction. <laughs> what do I think is the uh Yeah. Mm, gosh. That is a really excellent question. So it's sort of arranged by like It's clearly some it's, sort of religious significance. Yeah, it seems to me that this would be like some sort of uh, a, a filtering process, a way in which souls are filtered out of their bodies and in a specific order. Like they have done so in like a very like specifically like heart and mind body and bustle, basically in that order. See, I'd have had to go with the fertility, so it's, right? the, it's the tunnel? Yeah. The tunnel to death. It's basically sort of what, uh... It's Sometimes what you abandon first. It's fun. Yeah. The body gives out first. The heart gives out last. The mind goes in between. So I think if you live long enough, I think we've known enough where the mind goes first. You can see Harper almost busily just like, <laughs> like shake. Especially since he had like a reverent upbringing. Yeah, yeah. that's all right. Well, I reckon if you're a dog, you'd be in heaven down here. Uh, you pick the litter, whatever you want to gnaw on. <laughs> well, all dogs go to heaven. <laughs> or to the well. <laughs> to the well. Yeah, the, the heavens, it would be the, the, be the best way to describe the heavens is that which is beyond our reckoning. We understand, as in we as a people from Mahoma understand the idea of life and death, that life begins in the well and it begins again in the well. You are judged and then you pass on once again to live yet another life. But that which is beyond the heavens is unreckonable. It's even, it is said to be even beyond, because that which is beyond the heavens is beyond even the reach of the gods, beyond the reach of the covenant. It is unknown. It is the other. It is oblivion. So when things come from the heavens, it's seen as in our reckoning, like as something wholly alien. But we, as being from <laughs> Mahalma, understand that we begin and are born again from the well. But depending on our deeds, we'll determine what happens in our next life. The, to be clear, the people of the covenant believe in reincarnation, right. but not in that word. They believe in what they call the resurrection of the flesh. Well, souls, well, bones. I think it's pretty clear. Well, let's get out of here. You pass through the doors. Well, Do you well. want to also fix this door as well, Lisa? Yeah. Okay. Make a trivial skullduggery test. This is not failed. 85% chance. Uh, ought to. Okay. Clink. She locks, locks it in with a piece of wax paper. Chink. That's good. Imagine like a what are those candies that we always get? High 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 oh, shoes. 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 Yeah, yeah. Get them break. You want or go get them now? The uh, <laughs> 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 just go get them now. I'll be right back. <laughs> but ima imagine if you will, like you know, high shoes. Other candies are wrapped both in a wrapper and in like wax paper. Just basically taking bits of wax paper and put, putting it into where the the, the little latches and kind of closing it to ensure it doesn't lock all the way. Just enough wax paper to ensure nothing. She carry yeah, can no. You carry candies? That's right. Yeah. <laughs> she carries candy. She's like an old man. <laughs> Here, kid, you want some You want some hard Would you like it? You Would you some, like a Werther's? Would you like a Werther's? I love Werther's. Would you like I a taffy? I love Werther's. <laughs> Would you like some hard candy from this dish? I carry that's, that's hard? <laughs> She carries it. It's like a hard piece of hard candy. Don't open the cookie tin. It's got sewing supplies. I think I think all hard candies, like old people hard candies, are like hard candy golems because they don't disconnect. Yeah. And you want to eat just one. You're like, oh, that orange one looks great and it's striped, but it's connected to the one that's green that tastes like fucking mint. <laughs> not just not mint, toothpaste mint. <laughs> yeah. So you, you you get the door open and and it and the the tunnel continues just for maybe another 10 or so feet until it kinks Fair. first to the right and then it kinks once again further down and you kind of come to a point where the tunnels are kind of break apart um, essentially you have a choice you could continue west or you could go north 
The tunnel to the north side is much wider. The tunnel to the south is much more narrow, and the ceiling begins to descend. Harper's busy getting out of his high shoes. Yes. <laughs> He's rifling through his sack. <laughs> you said it went south or west? Or My opinion west. So that that the, the tunnel which goes west begins to narrow and the ceiling grows uh, lower. The path to the north, the tunnel is wide. Like another, right like now. another under street. So when she was telling you a lot about all of this, did she say anything besides stay away from the light? That's no. all she said. She said when you start, go away from the light. She no. gave us a bunch of cryptic bullshit that didn't mean anything in the end. No. That's really all she said, I thought. I mean, I That is. Oh, okay. She said, go away from the light when you enter. And when I said, can you give us a map or some kind of direction, she said, just go away from the light. Oh, what do you think? I think, well... North. You think? West is the direction of the place. I don't know. Jonathan, you might have better reckoning than I do. Let's keep going west then. I feel that uh, if she's speaking in riddles, then the light itself means the sun. And I'll look towards the western path as it like descends downward. You think west? I do. I mean, I could be wrong. I don't know that she's clever enough to speak in metaphor. Well, let's uh, manifest our de- destiny and go west. But she did graduate first in her class. She was first in your in your class. You were number two. Uh, so they have Harper, to her. you kind of collect yourself and you realize that there's a path that continues going west, but it grows very narrow. The ceiling drops down, and the path to the north actually continues at the same width and height of this vaulted ceiling. And they're discussing right now the implications of going west or north. With like what little Josephine had told everybody about the direction. I need a great one. I'll just have any. You just hand me like five. <laughs> Thank you. So you pause for a moment at this crossroads, uncertain what to do as Jonathan gives you his recommendation. Then we should go west. I'll, I'll follow whichever lead you guys want to go. I don't really have an idea of where to go here. I'm fine with that. It's a thought. I don't know. But it is the correct uh, general direction according to the, uh, the compass. Yes. Sun rises in the east and sets in the west, go away from the light. Okay. I see. Let's go your way then. So with that, you begin going west. The tunnel grows narrow, and it grows low, and it grows so low that you must crawl up on hands and knees to actually get through here. And then suddenly you can feel that there's this encompassing darkness all around you, and that the finely laid brick and stone of the of the of the undercroft behind you it is not the same here. It is a narrow, wet, slick, muddy tunnel, tightly confined. Where you're standing right now, up on crouched down, you know, on hands and knees, it seems barely brushing your head, even the tallest among you. But you realize if you continue going west, you will have to crawl on hands and knees, and it will be a very narrow, claustrophobic path. Anybody having second thoughts? Always. Enough that you think we should be turning around. I mean, I figure I'll fit. I'm about the rest of you, as I look towards uh, the mountain among nymphs amongst us. I know I will. I'm, I'm willing to be the first if I if. Well, so I don't. I don't mean to say this, but my arm's bigger than you and Harper put together. Because I do this. <laughs> <laughs> 
but <clears throat> I'll follow. Just wait here. Zodaren's gonna go ahead. You will need a torch and not a lantern to get through there. The lantern is too big. You'll have to use hands and knees and body to squeeze through. I ain't got a torch. Um, yeah. Alright, no. Hand him a torch. Okay. You hand him the torch. You drop down upon hands and knees, Terwin. I'm decidedly old fashioned. You can feel this crampedness as he drops kind of further. Oh, hold on, though, as he starts to crawl in the hole. Watch out for the water panthers! And it's not a hole down. It's just the tunnel becomes so small and narrow. And he begins to, you see his boots kind of move back and forth until he's swallowed in the darkness. Uh. Within the tunnel, where you're at, Terwin, you can feel the sides constricting on either end. You're kind of uh, uh, pulling your way through, and you're fitting through fairly well, but about five or six minutes into it, you can hear your panicked breaths. You can feel your chest constricting against the floor. You can feel your back scraping against the wall. You feel your arms almost stuck at one side until you realize you can't move both at once. You must move one at a time to pull your way through. And still the torch is in front of you, burning. If you could push it in front of you and crawling your way through very tightly. You're, you're, what's your body? What's your build type? Well, I'm frail. Okay. Uh, being frail. And I'm 5'7". Height not important. <laughs> <laughs> Frail. He's the little guy. Slim. <laughs> normal. Husky. And then we have Corey. <laughs> Mike, this is your first character that could fit in the hole. I know, right? <laughs> Normally I'm corpulent. Always. Instead of seriously. Like corpse like this. Despite being frail, you must make a trivial resolve test to withstand stress. Uh, no, so, no way the f- fun fact. Uh, <laughs> fun fact? Yeah, I, I had no idea I suffered from a mild case of claustrophobia until I had an MRI recently within the past year. And wow, that is scary. <laughs> it's really scary. Doesn't I, help that it does this. Jump, 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 jump. Actually, that calms me down. Because I had something to focus on. So trivial resolve would make it 96. I apologize. It's fear, not not uh, not stress. So first is fear. Okay. So yes, yeah, it is trivial for you. Makes sense though. <laughs> it's not that you can't slip through. <laughs> it's the sides. It's touching. Whew, so okay, I, I was worried for a second. I rolled a 96. <laughs> so I passed it right on the nose. Okay. Oh, you're, wow. <clears throat> you're moving, 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 and you're not really sure how far you move. It's been about 15 minutes. You can't see the light, obviously, where he's because the light's in front of him. And you can't hear him either. You just hear this kind of wet slickness for a minute until he's like enveloped by the narrow passage. And then suddenly, <gasps> you come out the other side. As you can see that the floor has shifted. Thus why it was down so low, yeah, yeah. and it comes back up into this open brick area on the other side. And you guess that you've moved maybe 30 feet? Oh. It took that long. Uh, I'll, uh, I'll shout back the Well, actually, I'm going to take a look at my surroundings first. Yeah. You turn about, and the, the <laughs> tunnel kind of opens back up, and you can see it actually takes a very... A very sharp turn, first south, and then west. And the tunnel's actually vaulted with brick like this, and skeletons are in the nearby wall, and you're all alone, and you can hear this sound deeper from within. It's kind of like a sound sound of something ricochet. Oh, well, that noise. <laughs> no. It's um, the Mach 1. Chomp, 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 chomp. 
It's like it's not the mock one. It's just there's there's ricocheting sounds and the sound of crumbling and water dripping and dribbling somewhere deeper within. Ooh. So I'll uh, bend down towards the... Should we go after him? I think he's dead. I'm the captain now. <laughs> <laughs> That's dark. Uh, I'll bend down towards well, then the... Lead by example. <laughs> Terwin. All right. Order first order. You go first. Hold on. Terwin. I'll lean down by the hole, and I'll uh, hold my torch up so I can uh, you know, see this way and that way, and I'll yell down the hole... Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Can you hear me? You can hear it. Yeah. 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 It's about ten yards, I guess. About ten yards, <laughs> I guess. I guess. <laughs> ten yards. Well, I fit, boss. No. No. <laughs> no. That didn't even echo. <laughs> oh. Sorry. <laughs> What am I supposed to do? Send Opera through! through. through. I think you should break on through to the other side. It's not that the tunnel looks too small. It just looks incredibly claustrophobic to you. Banneker. Mm, okay. I have an idea. Yeah? It's a pretty, are you a pretty big fellow though? Not yeah. among men. <laughs> he's tall. He's handsome. He's six foot six. So it's gonna be really difficult for you to like move your shoulders in there. Uh, yeah, I, w- I would think so. It doesn't look like I. It doesn't look like my toe would fit in that place. That's good too. Let's, uh, yes, that would be the size. Let's lay out a uh, a tarp from one of our knapsacks. We'll we'll drag place. you through, so you don't have to move your arms. Attached to a rope. Hey. Anyone got a rope? Yes. Alright. Got a 30 foot of rigging right here. <laughs> have a climbing rope. How many yards? This says climbing rope, so whatever the standard was in the book. Roll 3d10. Or sorry, roll 4d10. Where's your salsa made? New York City. Get a rope. And then rope. add 4. <laughs> okay, so that's 12, 15, 23. Plus four, he said 27. 27 yards of rope. That's a lot of rope. That's more than he said it was pretty far. I definitely have enough. Oh, great. Brad, you're able to move with all that rope. And I'll give you the supply. Oh, I should probably mention that um, every, once again, every nine yards of rope accounts for one encumbrance. That's. What am I to speak? Two. No. Change. Nine, 27. Oh, great. I'm at my encumbrance limit. So, remember, there's no limit. Your limit is actually... Well, the, I'm right, at right. So you start suffering over. Just be sure to, be sure to count for it on your character sheet, though. Yeah, I'll put it down. Yeah, because every, every yard of rope counts for one against that nine. Yeah. Right, so every nine things accounts for one encumbrance, so every nine yards of rope is one. Oh, All right, hand me the uh, hand me the end of the rope. I'll go next. Right. <clears throat> right. You too feel the press of the, of the the claustrophobia here in the tunnel as you're squeezing through, Jonathan. What's your body type? Medium. So it's normal. Okay. Yeah. It's gonna be easy result test for you. So All right. I'm gonna yeah. basically keep my eyes closed while I do it. <laughs> And just trust. <laughs> I don't want to open my eyes. All right, easy result. That is 52, 60, 82%. Come on, dice. 71 is success. Yeah. You come out on the other side, <sighs> taking deep breaths, and you can feel like this is this. There's this weight on your chest okay. as you're passing through. There it was not comfortable at all, but you can see that the knapsack is pulling where they cut a hole in it and tied the rope off to it. So, so if I get stuck in here... We started in a, a chamber of death and then moved through a chamber of birth, I'll say, as I look back through the small opening through which we emerged. <laughs> if you get That's stuck, it. we've got oil. That's 
<laughs> That's a funny way of putting it. Um, how do you think we're going to get the rest for you? Hmm? I think I'll be fine. Oh, sorry, sorry. I mean, there. I was there. It's just the two of them at I this point. I think I'll be fine. I think I'll be fine. We could probably t- converse sort of slowly through the hole. We can lean down next to it. I don't know. Everybody else is... You're the... You're the biggest among us, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's a good thing Krim is in here, actually. That dude's huge. Alright, so we want to put you through next, as I'll look at. Because you're going to be the biggest trouble. I'm gonna take all the 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 very end of the rope. It's not tied to me. I'm gonna stretch it as far as I'm gonna go, and I'm gonna tie my bag, my bow, and everything that I have on me, okay. so that it's being stretched out behind me. Okay. I can push you from behind if you want. This is a push that's necessary. <laughs> Uh, no uh, it's not push, like a Winnie the Pooh pull. situation. <laughs> I think I'm gonna get stuck in this goddamn hole. It's, this goddamn hole, and you guys gonna have to cut me up. Well, to be fair, this is a holy place. <laughs> not really Banneker heads into the tunnel. <laughs> uh, so, Banneker, you are husky. It is gonna be a standard resolve test against fear, and you can add an assist die. Because they're pulling you as you're squeezing your way through. Right? You got it. Yeah. I failed. The, your heart begins to hammer in your chest. And you start so to it's take, standard, right? Yes. Yeah, then I failed. You start to take very panicked breaths. And at one point, you realize you're stuck. Because your shoulders won't move and you're there for... What seems like minutes trying to, uh, 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 and you can't even move your Lord, arms. Lord, kick me! <laughs> kick my legs, man! <laughs> they can't. They, they can't. Nobody can. Nobody's behind you. Hear you. Nobody's in front of you. It's just like imagine, like if you were underneath a blanket and talking to yourself. That's the acoustics right now where you're at. So stuck you are in this. Imagine being zipped up in a in a in a in a uh, in a sleeping bag over your head and your feet that it's not quite big enough to put both your head and feet and you're like throttling trying to stretch your arms and you can feel this tightness all around you as you gain six corruption and you suffer do you have any disorders i think so okay so uh you gain some peril um ah uh seven mental peril peril Seven mental peril. And you, you are six corruption? Six Ooh. corruption and okay. seven mental peril. Oh, oh no. And as you begin taking these Even very panicked terrible. breaths and you start to worry, and he starts kind of throttling and like you can feel him tugging in the rubble like as he's going backwards as you feel like you're stuck. And at the right moment, suddenly you're birthed from the other side of the tunnel as you come out and you stand up and stretch your arms out and you can eyes are. Bars, like, tits. <laughs> Never again. Never. Maybe at least once more. Uh, I mean, uh, no. Uh, I'll break down the damn walls. I'm going with Jonathan. I'm going with Jonas on the boat. Hey, back up. You did it. Welcome to Columbia. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna try and talk him through an intense oh, yeah, moment. I'm talking. Um, <laughs> After being through that experience on the battlefield, like, um, or through leading other people through it, and just like trying to keep them going. Yeah, absolutely. Like infinite in general. Uh, go ahead and make a leadership test, if you would, Terwin. All the good things. Yeah, Terwin, what's the difficulty of it? So, Terwin's leadership test to calm down Banneker will be standard. Standard? Okay, it'll be 58%. Oh, one. Nice. Let's go ahead and restore your peril. Nice! You did, you did it. If you had any disorders, you wouldn't be suffering from fear because it was a crit success. Uh, but you still gained the corruption. Wow. You, he's cal- He's basically kind of calming you down at this point as the next person is passing through the tunnel. Who All is? Right, boss. You're right. You're right. You're right. I made it through. I made it through. I can go. And we're gonna, All right. And we're going to keep making it through. So I'm the only one over going. here with light, so I guess I'm so back, to back to the others while the two of you are talking this out. Jonathan, thank you. The rope worked. You're welcome. We cut back to the other side of the tunnel, where Harper and Elisa and Warren are standing. 
the last bit of Banneker's goods kind of slip through the tunnel. Well, that's a good sign. All right then. She drives down her knees. Elisa, what's your what's your body and body type? Slender. Yeah, I'm gonna look at uh, Banneker and, uh, and I say, I'm sorry. I should have been doing this from the beginning. All right now, Elisa, take it slow. Take it easy. As I would like to assist her with her resolve test. Sure. Yeah. Absolutely. Love I it. I have two ranks in it. Hey, add an assist die. I love it. Brief. So, so Brief. for you, Elisa, it's going to be as a slender person, it'll be easy resolve against fear. Yeah. What? That's a sixty-six. Uh, Twenty-four. Nice. You can feel your arms are moving pretty well through this. You can hear. Terowin's voice drawing you to the other side. Your arms are moving very free. The tunnel's winding to sight. Then suddenly you're up on your hands and knees. Then you're on your knees. Now you're standing next to the others in this cramped tunnel. But you made it through. I think I cleared it out. I think I cleared it out. That you did. <laughs> you can see that that I all of you are covered. Your, bell- your bellies and your arms and your legs are covered in mud and muck. Uh, in cold water. Feel that kind of soaking through to your small clothes and your socks. Uh, after the third child, they say it gets easier. <laughs> it makes sense. I, mean, I was a big boy. I was a big boy. So back to the other side where Harper and Warren are. Get some next. Yep. I would like to do the same. I'm just, uh, you know, I'm saying every every inch does it. Don't need it. Don't need to go quick. Just need to keep making progress. The torch snuffs out. <laughs> it's been ten minutes. Oh, we can light a lantern again, can't we? You should mark the torch off. Yeah. I, I, I mean, already yeah. marked it off. Cool. All right, when I so, use Warren, what is your body type? Oh, normal. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yours is a routine resolve test. Okay. This is the first thing. Uh, it's a 74 percent It's going to go insane. insane. Or he's going to disappear inside the tunnel. So I don't know if we're going to pull through it. Like. Uh, it's a success. Oh. <laughs> As Warren is in the tunnel, you're by yourself, thinking, ruminating on what has transpired over these past few weeks. And as you're in this tunnel alone, with only your voice in your head saying, <laughs> Even Terwin's voice kind of <laughs> dies down, but you hear these whispers from somewhere in this tunnel that say, Don't tell them anymore. Warren, Warren, Warren. The name almost loses its meaning as it's repeated. Like if you say a word over and over, just the name. As it's said over and over, just the name. And it almost loses its meaning as you come out on the other side and you look toward the others and you feel like you're, you feel discombobulated. You feel like you're just woken up from like a deep sleep. Like you're surrounded by the others and you knew what happened, but you feel like you just kind of came out of, like you're in the middle of like uh, REM sleep. In the middle of a deep, a deep, deep sleep. He kind of looks at all of you bewildered. It's horrible in there. We're not bad. I made it. How long was I in there? A couple of minutes. The same, same amount of time as the rest of us. Like three hours. Yeah, it felt like it. <laughs> <laughs> it takes about three minutes. Uh, less than ten. Were you calling to me? Yes, I was. Yeah. Oh, not boss? just you, everyone else. No, it was just Tara. No, it was just me. Yeah, the boss figured out after I went that he should be helpful. I'm sure you were just hearing that, kid. It was a tight chamber. Could be. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> now, Jonathan and I were discussing certain other All right. Things. Hey, uh, Arthur's alone. Arthur. Yeah? 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 <laughs> yeah. Get the last one, mate. Mate. Right. Right. <laughs> so, Arthur, being the skinny guy that he is, actually is, uh, Pretty good at getting out of a bind. You can almost call him an escape artist. Oh yeah, yeah. So, uh, yeah. So he will uh, lower the light, uh, turn the light off on his lantern, and say, "Hello, darkness, my old friend." As he uh, starts to crawl through. 
Do you have escape artist as a trait or talent? It's uh, my professional. That's my uh, racial. Or sorry, ancestral trait. Oh, nice. Because I rolled uh, half, or and then I rolled That's gnome, right. and then I rolled. That. So you need not make any skill tests. He scurries through with such great speed or suppresses on either side. <sighs> he pops up. Told you, fat. As he comes into here, you can see Banneker kind of bewildered looking at this, and he backs up and knocks over this huge clay pot, and ash spills all across the floor. Oh. Ash. Oh, 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 but what were you doing? That's probably people. That's uh. somebody's great-grandmother. <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of, the motes of dust are now in the air, oh. kind of gray and hazy, oh. as you oh. kick it around with your feet. Tie a scarf around my face. Oh, yeah. Cover my face up. It was great. What, I mean, was that supposed to go slower? I, I, I'm sorry. Did I go too fast? Let's get going. There's nothing wrong with him. Just want to know how you did it, but we'll talk later. Alright, so. We can move on then. And, uh, uh, wait, hold on. What? Warren starts to pat his, his body over, and he realizes the, the uh, talisman that Andor gave him back there was lost in the tunnel. I gotta go back. What? I, I can get it. What, 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 what'd you forget? Uh, it's a, it's a bundle of sticks on a, on a, on a, on a leather chain, leather, leather for string. Bundle of sticks? So, so trash. Is it, is it, is it like an Odie symbol? Is that, is that pull out a wooden uh, pulley symbol? Not, not, not exactly. It's a... Uh, cultural knowledge always shocks me back. I don't want to explain it. it, it it's mine. It, 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 I forgot it. it I lost it. All right. All right. Well, we'll tie a rope to your foot and pull you on out. When, okay. Just, uh, I don't know, give us some sort Before of... Before he goes in... Okay. As I get it back, it'll be fine. I think. I mean, and it's garbage. All right. I, 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 don't, I wouldn't know one bundle of sticks from another. Let's <laughs> grab all the sticks. <laughs> and let's let him do this. Just be careful, mate. Okay. And uh, just slam your foot on the ground twice when you're ready. All right. To be pulled. In the tunnel, you slip once again. <laughs> was it your intending your neck? I actually did lose it. I'm going back for it. Okay. But I have a feeling that things aren't quite right this time because I was protected and then now it's gone. So Warren's a little worried about what's going to happen, but he, he really needs to get it back. Okay. Are you going to purposely fail the skill test? Yes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, six corruption. <laughs> and, oh my gosh. Uh, Twelve mental peril. Okay. And Warren comes back out the other... He comes back out about six minutes later. He returns. There's something... Different. It's the glowing eyes. It doesn't say anything immediately. I've got what I came for. We can move on. He stands up straight, his chest puffed out, his nose held high in the air. Perfect immaculate posture. Well, you, you found your bundle of sticks. Even the accent slips away. Warren fastidious, fastidiously brushes his sleeves off and, uh, Make sure his 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 clothes are, are nicely arranged and everything. Yes, I have it. I'm, I'm ready to go. We can move on. Can we see the glowing eyes that he described? Is that well, like a thing? <laughs> it seems to be just a flashing of the light across his uh, across his eyes for a moment, almost like you would see like a cat in the dark. And yeah. maybe it's just that the lights playing tricks on you when he came through the tunnel, but you don't see any glowing coming from his eyes at all. Let me light my lantern up again. The shadows are long on his face. I'll turn it up then. All right. Warren. Say spirits. Spirits? What? Oh, shit. 
you hear the sound coming from deeper within. You're not really sure exactly what it is, but it almost sounds like something in the earth shifting or moving. Stone grinding upon stone and then shattering and clattering against itself, like rubble settling somewhere within. And it's coming from the tunnel that continues west in front of you. Out of curiosity, has the devil's lettuce given me any ideas while we're down here? Oh, you did take the devil's lettuce, didn't you? I did. Go ahead and roll. Um, I believe you have to roll a, a, a scrutinized test. Uh, yes. yes. So your test will be standard, scrutinized. Okay. So that's uh, 62. 58. Well, in your inebriation, as you, I believe, you and others, who else was affected by the devil's lettuce? Hell yeah, being a devil weed! It's a drug. You're <clears throat> <was> really hungry. <laughs> You know, this thing called a twink you've never had before. You, you feel really that you feel that you're probably going the right way, even though the compass seems a bit erratic. You have this kind of this inkling or this kind of urge, almost in like it's almost deep, a deep gut, not just a gut feeling, but like a draw, almost like a magnetic draw to continue the direction that you're going. You can feel it right in your gut. Like, you've never been so certain of something in your entire life. Your instincts kick in. Like, everything is telling. Even the, in the hackles of the back of your neck and ears are raised. You can feel that you're going the right way. Harper, let's get going. All right. This way. I'll move you on over. You continue west for just a few short feet. And that's when you realize that although the tunnel does continue westward, there is an iron gate with a door fixed into it to, in front of you, no more than a stone's throw. But immediately to the south, to your left-hand side, is this short, stunted tunnel with an iron gate, and it seems to lead into this very large, broad chamber. At least it's going to look between the two directions. You feel west is the right way to go, ellipses. Well, what's the other way? That is south. It is the giant moon. I'm kind what's, of interested, but what, this would be the right way. What is in that giant room? Okay. Let's go the right way. Well, yeah, but... Warren approaches and kind of clasps his hands upon the iron gate up. He's trying to peek through inside, and it's dark. Hang on, hang on. I do have dark sense. What? what I'm sorry, what do you have? I have dark sense. Which is? I can see in the dark. Uh, it's low be clear. Down. So, what what does the effect say specifically? Uh, I have to look that up. I think it's I think it's starlight. You should light. you should look in your well. It's different for every ancestry, so you should okay. look in your handy dandy player's handbook. All right. Your trait that you have. <laughs> if you wouldn't mind handing me a player's handbook. Too. And I'm gonna try and get as far away from Warren as I possibly can. That's maybe like within arm's reach. Seriously, yeah. that's what I thought. I was. It's just these are these are. Although these tunnels aren't, they're not <clears throat> claustrophobically small, but you can't really move more than two abreast without without having to disrupt where people are at and slip past them. Oh, you have to oh, oop past them. Well, that's, oop, what, that's what, what, what I'm gonna say. This I'm gonna be like, all right, everyone, I've, I've got to make water, so um, I'm gonna go back this way and I'm gonna just kind of pat him. Me. Okay. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, oh, sorry for the listeners. Pat, boss, Tara. Oh, oh. Right, listeners. Yeah, I'm following. <laughs> Benneker and Tara would step away in low, hushed whispers. So, um, this isn't an ancestral trait, so I'm having a hard, a what, hard time. So, here. help me understand what it is. It is from the possessed uh, drawback. Oh, yes. Yeah, Give so me. These creatures can see in the dark. Okay, All perfect. So you can see the dark. That's okay. right. Okay, that's right. So, um, the possessed drawback, you can... Oh, this is... Somebody hold this. Yeah. Actually, take this one because it's <laughs> fine. Okay. I'll put my name in it. Um, inside the tunnel, and keep in mind that even though you can see in the dark, any sort of objects or distances or dust or whatever else may be there, 
with bar your sight. But what you can see as you look inside is this very large curving tunnel that goes both ways. And the walls are literally, they're not, you can't even see the brick. They're inlaid with hundreds upon thousands upon thousands of bones affixed into the wall, kind of making these strange concentric hexagonal patterns. Okay. But it gets so, when I look through, it's, this, this is just a big room with that in it? Well, it, it is a curving chamber. Okay. And it appears to kind of sweep inward like this, almost like in a large circle. You can't see through beyond that. It just opens up to a huge chamber. Mm -hmm. And there's a wall beyond that, too, blocking your visibility. So, good thing is I have this little thing right here. Um, so it looks a bit like if you're looking through, if you're right here, it looks like this. Right oh, here, okay, look, gotcha. So that it's a T. Kind of, but it curves. And this, of course, is... So there's like several feet in front of me, there's a blank wall. Not a blank which, wall. Well, it well, is a line with was... all the bones on it. That's and right. Then, Goes to the left and right. That's right. Perpendicular. Well, curves around yeah. perpendicular from where I am. But we'll turn to Terwin and Banneker as they speak in low, hushed whispers. Boss. Yeah. Warning, warning. You told me something. Yeah. What did he tell you? Sometimes something takes over. A spirit, you know, he's got that. Yeah, his affectation was different. He's got that draw. He sounds like, what does that mean? Like a like a girl stammer. Yeah, when he goes in any more. Listen to him. This Meanwhile, back where Elisa and Jonathan and Harper are at, what are the three of you doing? Elisa, you want to start working on that door to the west? Yeah, we'll work on it. Okay. I mean, can't hurt to open all the doors, right? I mean, you know, it's nice to have an exit strategy just in case. Just because we're going the right way doesn't mean it's the only way we need to go. All right? So, yeah. You come we'll to the western gate. gate. It is challenging skull duggery. Uh, I've got the light. So, well, while she's lock picking, I'm gonna go, oh, what's going on over here? So I'll hold the, the torch up to the other way just because okay. a failure. Oh. oh. So you begin working at it. So let's not interrupt skill test, right. guys, just to be clear, um, so we don't divert attention. Um, so as you're picking the lock, um, you hear the snapping as one of the pins break. Uh, and this is a fail forward test, so you gain, uh, you suffer three mental peril. Okay. But you can continue working it if you like. Yes. Feel free to take your time. I got hours for the light here. To be clear, um, it will take, that lock took six minutes to work. Sorry, yes, yeah, six minutes to work. How long would it take your time to take the Triple. Hour? 18 what? minutes. Right. Yeah, that'll take my time. Okay. So you treat it as standard then. Okay. So I'm back up to 55. Hot five. Okay, take it. So this diet really likes rolling tens right now. Yeah. Okay. So Jonathan, what of your soul and our next to that? I'm fine with that. If we're just, we've got eighteen minutes to spare, I'm just gonna have a seat. Okay. And rest my some rest my bones. Twenty four minutes. Is that that's the first time? The the mud is gonna begin to dry and cake on your clothes at this point. Um so we come back to Harper. I'm on the light for poison. Terwin and Banneker. Trying to be careful, but uh he seemed, right there, Tim. Oh. He seems to think I blew him off when he originally told me I said, Do you need any help? And he said no. So you know, I figured I'd give him the space. But uh Yeah, I think it's beyond that. So this, I, this is the worst I've seen. I don't know. <clears throat> just, just a warning, boss. Well, 
Yeah. I asked him for the toe. Was he a half of Lorneite? Pretended Lorneite? Could have been Jonathan. Uh, no matter what. He said no. We need to. We need to support him. Because the last thing he needs right now is for any of us to start <coughs> treating him any different. Because. Uh, Something that ain't necessarily his fault. And by different, I mean poorly. Well, you know, I mean, if we're being honest, Warren's the only one I like. So I'm not going to treat him any different. <laughs> you hear a, got it! From, uh, <laughs> from, from Elisa as she pops the lock. <laughs> <laughs> <coughs> I mean, I gotta listen to you. Pop is a goody two shoe. Yeah, I think if I wasn't a leader, we'd be we'd be better. We'd be more aligned to friendship. Uh, all right, so I'll. Uh, thanks for bringing it up. Uh, At this point, I'm just making fun of everybody. <laughs> just <laughs> running down our, yeah. my rant list. Um, so remember that you may automatically adjust your peril condition track to unhindered. Mm-hmm. And I was you, already there. And you set for six more corruption. Okay. Yeah. Uh, just just oh, to be clear. If, so okay. So to 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 for to be clear. So for you, like when you choose to be possessed, mm-hmm. right? Uh, you immediately become in, unhindered, mm-hmm. and you suffer six corruption. Then you know what happens beyond that. That's all between. Someone have a us marker, very race marker. Yes, I do. Yeah. Bigger, better, stronger, smarter, faster. Here you go. And here's here's a slender, slender one, slender man. So the lock is opened, and the two of you return, and they are standing there, and. Jonathan stands up from his feet, and you can see that uh, that Warren is still looking inside beyond the grates, not the door that was opened, but a different tunnel entirely. Harper kind of turns toward all of you, blinding you for a moment with the lantern. Oh, no, I've got one. And I'll, uh, I'll hold the lantern above Warren's head, and I'll say, here, let me help you out. What, you, what we seeing? Um, beyond, you can see... Bones upon bones upon bones, stacked from floor to ceiling to where the brick is not visible, both on the walls and the floor. The floor is laid with the cracked skull caps of the dead. There is no brick to be seen. Heads off in two different directions. Um, Why would we want to go in there? Isn't that the wrong direction? Right. Yeah. It's just good to know our options, right? Listen, I ain't no grave robber. If I don't gotta go in, I ain't. I just wanted to look and sure. see what it was. I think there's well, you know, shit steel, but... Well, I'm just saying, if, if we, uh... If we have to really run our way back, wouldn't it be good to unlock this door, too? Just to, you know, have some additional ways of egress. Exit plan. Exit plan, I should say. I'd rather get out of here while there's still daylight. Did you just say egress? That is quite the word. He used it correctly. Huh. <coughs> you feeling all right there, Warren? Huh? You feeling all right there, Warren? Never better. Uh, that, are, we, are we going through this door or are we going through that door? Um, I'm going to have to unlock the one with the south, I assume, still. West, right? Well, no, this is the way towards the, you know, gate, but we wanted to go south. I mean, we don't know how many more of these dang gates we're going to have to open. No. We should just get to it. Hit her pattern, let's get at her. Alright. So everybody wishes to proceed and leave this behind. <laughs> I'm, I'm okay with that. That's so. fine with me. I mean, I'm interested, but I'm fine with going. Very well. We'll move on. Fine. I got enough trouble with the gods. Stepping on a bunch of dead people ain't gonna help me. I am not. I'm well, the not, dead, they don't have feelings, at least. I'm not opposed to avoiding. I don't know about that. So I guess we'll move on. Yeah. 
I don't want to be in the well of souls later on and somebody be like, you stepped on my head. I, I don't know how that works. <laughs> and they're not there. Not, I'm, not, I'm not a theologian, so. Uh, they're not there anymore. The You pass through the, the gate and Elisa, you turn around and roll a trivial skullduggery test. You false close it. Nope. Okay. Clunk. The door no. shuts and locks. Oops. This door was stubborn to begin with. I'm gonna have to pick it on our way back out. No, what is that? You hear this flushing of water <laughs> coming from deeper within. It wasn't the door? I don't know. Three second roll. Do it, Do it. Well, let's uh, keep let's keep on going. Can anybody tell which direction it's coming from? The sound. Well, ahead. Is it west? You well, think? Maybe. Why don't we be quiet for a second? She kind of looks around. You all look around. I'm not trying. Those who choose to listen may do so with a scrutinized test. This test is secret. No, secret. Secret. Yeah, it's not eavesdrop. Yeah, the secret. My apologies, eavesdrop. Yes, my apologies, eavesdrop. Eavesdrop. What's the difference? Oh, we don't know the difference. Okay. That's why it's secret. Alright. I'm going to have to remind me how to do this because I always screw so this So just up. treat it as a standard test. So let okay. me know your chance of success and let me know what you rolled. I would like to do a shake and not stir. So one moment here. Let's, let's, we'll go first with uh, Banneker. F- 51 is my standard mm-hmm. and I got a 26. Okay. Don't keep that? Yes. Okay. I rolled a 75. My standard is a 52, but I have shake and not stir. Got to re-roll. No, no, re-roll it. I would, yeah. Sure. Re-roll. Secret, secret. Okay. Yeah, 33 will definitely be better. Critical success. 33 is a crit success. <laughs> well, I mean, if, if that's... Yeah. If, cr- if you're asking, it is a crit success. <laughs> <laughs> you, you get to know that. Okay. Mm-hmm. What about yourself? I 58 and I rolled 61. Keep it. Yep. Elisa, the Lisa, your intuition was right on this. It is coming from in front of you. Um, and you could hear what sounds like something scraping on the ground. Yeah, it, it's definitely a head. Um, there's something else. Uh, metal sounding, maybe? Is that... Scraping on stone, maybe? Is Could be drug? There's something scraping up ahead, and I can't tell what. No point in milling about. I just say we just get at it. I'll start walking there with a lantern. Okay. You begin moving forward. Oh. Wait, trade, trade places. Alright, you take the front. I'll take the back. I'm gonna hold my lantern and take out my shield. Lantern right hand shield up. So, I'm gonna take marching order. Side by side, who's the two up front? Maybe us, because it's compass. Tarwin and who else? Elisa. Elisa. Who's next? Uh, I guess it's probably gonna be. Who's behind Tarwin? <laughs> who's the taller of the two? Eh, it doesn't matter. Elisa's probably taller. I am five. Once again, four. height doesn't matter. Oh, no. oh, okay. Then I'm gonna. Yeah, I'll, I'll be behind. I'll Spanning be behind with them. It doesn't matter. I'm and gonna pull my sword. Warren behind Lisa. Okay. And then who's gonna be behind Banneker? That'll be me. I'll be last. Okay. Let's go the other way. Mm-hmm. All right. You all begin to move forward, and you realize that beyond this gate, it kind of opens up in this large chamber that surrounds a central pillar. I don't know, I wouldn't call it a pillar. It's more broad in the belly than it is at the top, but there are all these bones affixed into it, and you can see there are these kind of small wooden boxes inset between the bones into this pillar. It's supposed to be like five foot diameter, and all of these drawers have been slid open, these kind of short stunted drawers that have these uh, iron iron rungs upon it to open them. And there must be at least 20 of these drawers kind of concentric all around the pillar. You haven't seen the other side of the pillar yet, but all these drawers have been opened. But as you step inside here, that's when you could see the flickering of light on the opposite side of the wall. 
and you can see these long, ragged shadows of something beneath.
universe. And where we last left off, you saw beyond this kind of large pillar of bones that goes runs from ceiling to floor, about about ten feet up, just lined with bones affixed into the pillar, including the walls around you. You see these kind of small wooden drawers where perhaps relics or belongings of the dead would be interred within, and all these drawers have been kind of pulled out like they've been robbed. On the other side of the pillar, you can see light, lantern light you would suspect, and there are these long jagged shadows within the, the light playing off the other wall. There's people there, and you can hear some shuffling and sounds happening. It's just, not really saying anything, but they're there. What are you gonna do? I'll uh, set the lantern on the ground and I'll hold my hand up as to indicate to stop. Okay. Leaving the lantern lit? <laughs> yes. Okay. Then I'll just point ahead and um, I'll whisper. I'll whisper, but I'm sure not. You, you think they're down here taking care of the place or robbing the place? Seems to me all of those drawers are open. Like they were searching for something. Yeah. If you were taking care of the place, you wouldn't leave all of them open. Uh, you think we should uh, leave them be and carry on? That's the way we need to go. How many of them are there? I don't know. They look at them. My imagination goes to worse places than yours. What do you think? Because if, if, they're, if they're thieves, and we go around them, maybe they'll keep thieving. I said, my imagination goes to worse places than yours. <clears throat> What's that? I won't say anything. I'll just like stare ahead, gripping my uh, my walking stick into the darkness. So you're thinking we should investigate. Did you see that? You hear, a, you hear a sound coming from the other pillar, the other side. Well, we're going to meet them if you keep the lantern up. I'll turn my lantern down. Down or off? Down. If Chairman turns his off, I'll turn mine off. No, um, oh God. I'll nod at you as you do that. But um, I'm going to motion the rest of you to kind of get back into the darkness. And uh, I'll keep my hand on the hilt of my sword. And I'll, I'll yell out at once they get back, if you all do. Oh, yeah. I'll pull out my gun and I'll wait. I'll say, oh, there. Clear it. You yell out? Yeah, yell out. Oh, there. Okay. Um, oh no, Willis, Kimberly, sit! You hear from behind the pillar as I will roll initiative. Okay. So uh, the grave robbers uh, will have an initiative value of 8 plus 5, uh, 13. Tara, what's your perception bonus? That's 5. Uh, 5. Okay, roll off. Roll, off. roll 10. Setter. Roll off. I got 10. Roll I got a 3. Okay. So the grave robbers go before Terwin. And then Bloodhounds yeah. will have an initiative of 8 plus. I have an 18. Oh, jeez. Yeah, I rolled 10 again. Alright. So there's no, there's no surprise. Um. Because the light lanterns were lit and you called out. Mm hmm. Yeah. So, um, we'll start first with Jonathan. You hear you hear from behind the pillar Arnold, Willis, Kimberly, sick! Doesn't Banneker I get to go, go first, first, actually. Uh, that's right. Put him stop. My apologies. That's right. Banneker, you're a smuggler. There we go. Spell it however I feel like. I love it. Between the two of you. Just call him Banker. Banker. What do you do? Well, do 
I see anything yet? Uh, not at this point, uh, but they are on the other side of the pillar, without a doubt. So, you have three AP. What do you want to do? I would like to step into the. No, I'd like to pull my gun. Okay, so that's one AP. Pull my. I already had my sword out, so. That's right. So, uh, dang. Um, hold on, I forgot the actions. It's been so long since I've used them. Um, is it got, what's the guy on one that I want to use? Where's the other guy? Where's the other guy? Oh. They're right here. Oh, Bob. Okay. I missed that. I'm on the wrong page. What would you like to do? Guile is dirty tricks. Well, I can't do dirty tricks because that's like blinding or... And you're not close to them anyway. I'm not close enough to do that, so... Unfortunately, you're three... You're not really sure you're walking into yet either because you don't know how many people are there. You do know there's three dogs. They call all three out. The bloodhounds. Yeah, I was trying. That's what I was trying to use. Was like to try and freak out the dogs. I don't know how to do that though. Are you talking about like intimidating word? Well, like don't, don't ignore the actions that come from it. Explain to me what you want to do if you would, Tim. I want to. I want to act. I want to scare them. But there's a, not. Well, he's already made his voice, but I want to make it sound like we're the city watch, and you know we're here. So, so okay. So just to be clear, you're not trying to scare the dogs. You're trying to basically kind of intimidate, pull the scare over. them. I don't know. I mean, the just, dogs. Or Everyone, the, the, the entire thing. Here. Okay, well, oh, enemies. Enemies. Sure. Okay. Yeah. So go ahead and roll. So a they have no idea who enemies. Right, yeah. Roll Lenny hatred would be the best way to do it. Um, go ahead and make a test. What's your current damage condition? Uh, unharmed. Okay. So your test will be routine. Okay. And what do I roll for that? Is it intimidate? Intimidate. Intimidate. Routine. Two and. That doesn't do anything. Yeah. I felt. You yell out and uh, that doesn't Move, move in there! Now. Let's get him! I've got you, scum! Uh, let's Nothing. get him, guys! <laughs> <laughs> oh, That's 2 AP. What will you do that? I don't know. Well, uh, it's okay. It's okay. Uh, it's fine. Uh, He's, hey, guys, it's Tim's turn, so let's let Tim figure it out. What else would you like to do? That's, I, don't, I don't have anything else. You want to save your last action point then? Yeah, just in okay. case I'm attacked. Cool. So, thank you. Thank you, last one. Okay, so Jonathan is now your turn. Go ahead and mark Banneker off if you wouldn't mind. I really wanted to Let's put a line through him, please. <laughs> thank you. Jonathan! <sighs> Dark thoughts indeed. As uh, clearly you have happened upon something or some people. What you gonna do? What you gonna do now? Oh boy. If you like, you could simply wait. Do we have a, uh, are they within the light where we can actually see them? Uh, you can see the shadows on the opposite wall beyond the pillar, uh, where they're kind of shifting around. You can't you really take an account of number, but you know already there are three dogs. If they called out, Kimberly, Willis, Arnold. <laughs> yeah, I got that. Sick em. Oh, shoot. Well, I'm going to try to use my uh, incredible numeration to count the shadows as quickly as I can. Love it. You may roll a gamble or a scrutinize on that, or awareness, rather. That's going to be a routine test. All right. 65, 75, with red as first, a 32. Okay. I have succeeded. You count six grave robbers and three dogs. Oh. That's one action point. All right. Six men, three canine. I'll turn around and say to to everyone. That's that's a lot. I will, uh... If you don't have a gun, stand near me. I'll do as he says, and I will grip tightly onto my uh, stick and 
lay and uh, hold my uh, my action points in case I need to parry. So if you want, you can spend one action point to take cover behind Terwin. Let's uh, do that. Giving you plus three damage threshold. I will do that. Okay. And I will lay, re- remain hold of my last AP for parry. Love it. The hounds break from around the pillar. <laughs> as they're rushing toward all of you and I believe, if I'm not mistaken, Terramon and Banneker are right up front. If we're looking at our no. marching order again. It's her it's here and Elisa, my apologies. Uh, one of the dogs will will tear toward um, my apologies. Uh, one of the dogs will come toward Elisa. And they move very fast on their feet. Very quick, in fact. Uh, and I have a 65% chance of striking roll of 52. They bite into you. Um, uh, I will uh, use uh, lightning reaction and shield wall in order to parry for her. Nice! Yeah. Okay, so it is going to be a challenging. I have lightning reaction. Yeah, it's what I see. Uh, which gives you one AP at the start of your turn. I thought we've normally done that. I mean, I, I mean, I believe it. I'm just roll that. We'll roll it for now. Look it up later. No big deal. So one eight. So go ahead and make lightning ratio. It's a it's a it's a challenging test because they're charging forward. Okay. Challenging will be fifty percent. No, sixty percent. And an eighty four won't do it. Okay. You try to bash the dog before it comes toward Elisa, but uh, you fail. Yeah. Uh, Elisa, you will suffer. Six, so one per charge, one per test. Okay. You suffer uh, nine damage. Okay. And as they do so, they're pulling on her leg. The dog's pulling on her leg. The other two dogs are coming close to her as well, seeing if this bloodhound pulls her off her feet. So you need to resist a takedown. Uh, so it's going to be a challenging coordination. Thirty-five percent chance, and a ninety-seven will not do it. Okay, Elisa's pull off her feet, and the other two dogs are up on her. Seventy-five. It's a sixty-four. It's a hit. The other dog, seventy-nine misses. So the other dog is now chewing on Elisa. Elisa, you suffer. Oh God, it's an explosion. Oh, uh, nine damage this again. <laughs> Elisa's off her feet. The three dogs are up on her, kind of chewing and tearing her. She's been she's fallen to the ground. Um, <clears throat> Moderately wounded. Oh no! Roll a d6 KO die. Let's see if you. Uh, oh, they get vicious quality too. So roll one additional d6. Uh, one and a four. Yeah. No injury, which is good. Okay, Warren, it is your turn. Okay. I will uh, pull out my bull whip and attempt to. What are the what are the traits that you gain, by the way, while possessed? Crippling constrictor, steely fortitude, and dark sense. Plus nine percent to all of your attributes. That's right. Bam! So Warren spins on AP. <laughs> Snap in the air and he pulls on the le- he pulls the leather. Do you hear it kind of growing taut? Like. I like the leather growing taut. What are you going to do now? I'm going to try to pull one of those dogs off of Elisa. Okay. With a... Uh, with a chokehold. Okay. Now while I'm holding this deed with uh, So go ahead and roll the strike. This is going to be a routine test. <laughs> yeah. Alright, so that will be a... 77% chance to succeed. Yeah, wow. 93. I'm going to re-roll. Okay. I'll take the misfortune point. Yes. Ah, uh, it's a success for thirty-one. Okay. Uh, and then you resist. Which choke. Eighty-three is a failure, so they are choked. Okay. At this point, and you have crippling constriction, which does what? Uh, when maintaining a chokehold, deal damages if using a bare-handed weapon. <laughs> roll. Oh. Okay. So first off, roll one d10 at your brawn bonus. Okay. That will determine the amount of peril they suffer. It suffers. All right, so my brawn, uh, that's going to be 18. Whoa! That's racist. That's uh, no more skill ranks for the uh, dog. Uh, and roll damage as a bare handed weapon. So 1d6 plus brawn bonus. Okay. 
Uh, we'll be ten. <laughs> ten! Yep. You hear a <laughs> a cackling as the dog is lightly wounded. Not, not from the dog, but from Warren. That'd be really weird. That Very. <laughs> Warren, you have one action point left. I'll bank it. Okay. Robbers! Okay. So from around the corner, these grave robbers break out, and they have not quite yet finished loading their flintlock pistols because it takes well, 4 AP. Yeah. Uh, so they are loading their pistols, the six of them, literally so one, they all kind of on either side, two of them take cover. While the others kind of break around or kind of locking, they're getting their pistols loaded so they're not ready yet but there's six of them flanking and they're kind of broken on either side of the pillow they're going to basically put you in a turkey shoot um, should they get their way. Terwin, what will you do? Uh, I'm going to strike out at one of the dogs that's uh, treating on Elisa okay. with a uh, downward strike towards its uh, with back With the torch? Back end. I, with the lantern, rather? Yeah, with the lantern down. Uh, yeah, put okay. the lantern down. What do you have armed with? i am uh, got my mortuary sword. Cool. Okay. Ha! You bring it down, it's a challenging test. Okay. Uh, it will be... A 50 percent chance. Uh, Seventy six won't do it. Um, thinking about rerolling it though for uh, to try and help Lisa out. So here we go. I'll take that this much point. Keep it secret. Keep it safe. Okay. Secret, secret. I got a secret. And a twenty two is a critical success. Nice. The blade comes tearing down as the lead dog that was upon her, his grasp, its grasp is released as he's blue, black, furred, basically uh, Dobermans, uh, who being clipped their ears and tails. Roll damage at additional d6. Okay. That will be... Second. Uh, nine plus seven is sixteen. That's a phase six. Is that a four? It's oh, a okay. four. I How much? I'm sorry, 16 you said? Uh, 16, yeah. Okay. Alright, the dog. Oh gosh. Uh, in one fell blow, it goes from unharmed to seriously wounded. I uh, roll 2d6 cast dice. Uh, and I get to add 2d6 because it's a meteoric weapon that's vicious. Oh, nice. Yeah. Okay. So roll 46. Let's eight, see if it suffers eight, an four. injury. Oh my goodness, I got too many. The odds are better than half. And not a single oh, six. Oh. Oh. Want to use a portrait point? Uh, I think we can save them for more dire circumstances. But so hey. one of the, so one of the dogs is in a chokehold. These dogs. Are one of them dire. has uh, been uh, has been exploder. suffered some pretty nasty Wait, nasty right. suffrage. And that brings us now to oh. Banneker. What you gonna do, Banneker? You can uh, see they're loading their pistols. Oh. Vince needs a few more moments and they're going to unleash hell upon all of you, peppering you with bullets. Um, how far uh, uh, How far away are they? Nine yards. Oh, nine yards. Um, and we're back within this, this, this area where we're kind of constricted, right? Well, you just came into the room. The tunnel is behind you, but keep in mind you've got you got two rows of you got two ranks of people behind you who are in the room as well. Who ju you just now entered at this point. So I want to fan out. Okay, so you want to kind of run along one of the walls? Yeah, I want to fan out. Okay, how far? How many yards? Um, because the circumference of the walls, because it's a large circular chamber, it kind of extends out. You just basically follow the the bones and rib cages to kind of bring yourself. How far do you want to move? And how about in your hustle? Six. Six. That's what my movement okay. is. Yeah, you move out six. <laughs> but because you're not closing distance, you're still not nine yards away from them. Right. You're just basically kind of breaking around. That's when you can see, kind of, so you move six yards forward, you can start to see that they have, they basically piled up a ton of shit they've been robbing from this place. Uh, kind of sacks and stuff. They've been robbing these, these the undercroft of everything you can possibly find. There's a great amount of riches back there um, that, that, no wonder why there's so many. Um, so that's one AP. <clears throat> uh, and there's anybody that's got a within nine yards. So 
I can do takedown with my ranged weapon. Okay. Is it loaded? It is. Okay. So, so as we are, we're still allowed to leave uh, flintlocks loaded, right? Because it's... Yeah. Okay. <laughs> That's not a repeater. It's just a strange... strange just, yeah. Just okay. Right. He draws some... Uh, go ahead and make a uh, coordination... Sorry, make a simple... Or sorry, whatever. Whatever a martial range test, I guess it is. Let's take one off his feet. Okay, is it what what is the My apologies, it's uh routine. Okay. <laughs> that is a sixty-five and twenty-four hits. Okay. I will see if he stands. So I can, I can choose to disarm, stunning blow, or take down. And I am going to shoot the pistol out of his hand. <laughs> the pistol goes flying. Boom! Fire is gonna. Pew, 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 pew. <laughs> you roll damage. You just did a takedown. That's just a straight takedown. No, that's part of it. It's no. You you choose to either do a, like a perilous stun. Okay. You're using, weapon, basically, you're using your weapon for a perilous stun. Okay. Yeah. So the pistol goes flying out of his hand. Your pistol is now loaded. So that's right. two action points. You have one remaining. Uh. So you basically you've used a move action and a perilous stun. Is there anything that I can take? Uh, um, Coverage, okay. any kind of. Unfortunately, not. Yeah. No, there's nowhere to take. And I will make an AP. Make an AP. Okay. So uh, that brings us to Elisa. I, moved away. You're on the ground, but fortunately, the mutts are off of you. There were more shots. Okay, so I could get up the... without uh, an opportunity attack. Uh, you never that's revoke it. an opportunity attack when you stand up, only if you stand up and move one yard away, which you can do with get up. Right, that's what I was going to do, but is that going to... If you move one yard away, yes, you will. Okay. If you just stand up, you won't. Get up. All right, then she's just going to stand up. Okay. You get up on your feet. You have a skill rank and coordination? Do not. Okay, it costs you two AP to stand up. So I could just do get up at the point that it's going to... Yeah, that's what get up is, yeah. You know what, is there anything within swinging range of me right at this moment? Uh, yeah, the dogs are still technically engaged on you. What were you armed with? I have my cane. No okay. Stick. You come to your feet and you have your your cane in hand. So, uh, I'm going to go ahead and... I mean, literally, you could hit a bitch. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, I'm going to try to stun a bitch, actually. So there you go. go. There you go. <laughs> Okay, uh, it's going to be a routine uh, athletics test. Okay. Okay, so 54. Yeah. Oh, yeah, strike. It's caught. Nope. 95 will not do it. Whew. You miss for your last AP. And next. Her, her. Her, her. Her, her. her, her. Uh, how far away am I from these doggos? Uh, you are six yards away. All right. Well, so then I will, uh, hustle on over up five yards. To be within a yard of them. Uh, and then I will go ahead and aim at one of the damn mangy mutts. Fire at it. Okay. Difficulty. Uh, it is going to be a routine test. Okay, routine test. So that's going to be 73. And the 34 will succeed. Nice! For all damage. Alright. So I get an extra d6 for being within a yard. And you attack with your pistol, of course. Just yes. Your grip. He turns the pistol sideways, Ravanian style. Boom! Oh, and it's a gruesome shot because I aim, so it's plus three damage. So with a five and a two, plus. 10, that's going to be a 19. Whoa, to one dog? To one of the dogs. Wow. One, two, three. Yeah, one shot. This other dog is now seriously wounded. Roll 2d6 chaos dice. Oh, no, two and a four. Okay. I mean, the dog, the dog yelps. Yeah. Brings anything else you wish to do? That's it for me. Okay. That now brings us to Jonathan. Jonathan, you were taking cover behind Terrellin. What do you want to do? Terra one's right there. I'm probably like uh, basically close enough to uh, engage with one of the dogs. Absolutely, you are. I don't really want to, but uh, mm. I have to do something. I'll sort of feebly take a swing at the dog with my stick. Combat not being my forte. Like, eh. It's a standard test. <laughs> Go away. Uh, I'm gonna clonk you on Grab the dog. Grab my cane and hit that thing. 
Do you a routine test? Yes. 63. So red first. Uh, 86. I... You know, with 63 is a pretty good chance. You want me to... Do it. Yeah, there you go, there's there's yeah. five left. Alright, let's do it. Oh, I know. He... Right. Jonathan takes one sw a feeble swing and it hits the dog, but not enough to hurt it as it barks I and yelps. Hurt and it's snapping and frothing just within inches of you. It's like beaver toes. 43. I successfully hit. Nice. <laughs> Roll damage. I hit. Although it's a brawn bonus, so that's... Uh... Probably not that high. Uh, it's a staff, so it actually does combat. Uh, oh, you're yep. It does the, uh, the combat bonus. 1d6 plus your... Combat bonus. Yeah. All right. Come on, six. No, I did uh, eight points of, uh, of bludgeoning damage. Nice. Yeah. Uh, so it is grievously wounded. Roll 3d6 chaos dice. <laughs> uh, I did, in fact, wound it. You guys softened it up for me. <laughs> All right. I did not injure it. Oh, no, injured the dog. <laughs> just, yeah. It's limping and biting and... Sick him on him, sick him, get him, Willis, get him, Kevin, go, go, go! Is the, is the dogs, the hound's master is issuing them to continue their attack. Um, I could use the strike again action at this point. You could. Do it again, man. Yeah, one action point, Remember right? With the strike. Yeah, I've only used one so far. So it's just minus ten, point. right? So strike again, simply yeah, make nice another step. attack, and now it is standard. Yeah, instead of routine. All right, cool. And then it's an additional D6 if I hit. Yep, that's right. All right. So basically, I added it on top of it. All right, come yeah. on. I got 53 percent So it should be to before first. damage is declared, but that's okay. Uh, okay. We're still playing the rules. Yeah, Don't, worry about, Don't uh, worry about it. Don't worry about it. My bad. You're good. Don't worry about it. Uh, 20. I hit again. Roll D6 and add it on top. All right. Just two. one D6 out of six, the top. Six. All right. <laughs> Uh, I just did an additional uh, two damage. So it's total... Eleven. Eleven total damage? Yes. It, it is a... slain. Ah, no. <laughs> Whack! Yes. He hits the dog once. Jonathan and is the he man. Almost, he almost breaks the staff over the, the dog's muzzle oh. as the dog has been dispatched. One is still caught in a chokehold. The other one is still seriously oh, wounded. Oh, just break its neck. I'll maintain my last AP. And, uh, yeah, and now it is the hound's turn. The one that is caught in the choco uh, is going to try to escape. Uh, it needs a <laughs> uh, it needs a 50. 50. I rolled a 17 and escapes. And as it escapes, it uh, comes toward you to try to snatch, to bite, bite, choo choo. 77 is a crit failure, oh. giving you an opportunity once again to make an opportunity attack with your with your whip. Make okay. an attack. Your attack is easy. Alright. So, um... Uh. Melee. Okay, that will be... 87. And it's an 85. Nice. <laughs> uh, roll 1d10. Your bond bonus? 1d10? Yes. Yeah, the chokeholds. All right, 11. 11? Yeah. Ugh. Okay. Uh, it's a like minus three skill ranks right now. Right. You have crippling constrictor, so roll damage. Okay. Uh, 1d6 plus uh, brawn bonus. Uh, 13. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, he whips it back and forth, and he grabs it around. He gra he snatches okay, it with the whip one. and pulls it forward. You hear this snapping sounds. The dog goes flying across the room. This, like, 45-pound dog. <laughs> <laughs> stumbles against the wall and falls near you with its legs up a splay as he literally just throws it with both hands on the end of the whip. <laughs> so that that dog's dead. <laughs> dead. <laughs> One dog remains that was near Terwin still fighting for its life and its master has not called it back so it will continue its its vicious attack as it will uh, yeah, one step closer to it will uh, 3D it kind of it begins to kind of like move almost like kind of like shark like <laughs> snapping out frothing yeah. barking at you rearing back leaping but kind of stepping backwards as well using dirty tricks um, its test is going to be 45 I roll an 80 I'm going to re-roll that fortune point and that's a 31 success so it's a success so you won't be able to, um, you need to make an awareness test. This test is going to be standard. You're trying to ga gauge where it's going to be. Okay. Awareness test. Be standard, let's say 51%. Uh, 
And uh, 37 will succeed. It bites and snarls, but you gather where it's going to attack and it unleashes. As the teeth zero one. Uh. <laughs> Crit success. <laughs> you gather where the dog's going to be, and as you kind of take a step back, you expose your side, and it bites out, chewing into your rib cage. Uh, and you suffer seven plus six, so 13 damage. 13, I am uh, lightly wounded. Okay. Uh, uh. And you figure so the dog's kind of tugging on your clothes, as just threatening to pull you over. You need to resist a takedown, so go ahead and make a standard coordination test. All right. Standard coordination is 37%. That's an 86, so I fall over. Okay. <laughs> Terrence pulled off his piece of dog's head, yanking and pulling at his side at this point. Um, that now brings us to Warren. Okay. I'm going to strike out with my bullwhip again and try to pull that dog on the camera. Okay. I hope he's already hurt, too. Seriously. Warren's a dog killing machine. <laughs> what are you doing to get up, sorry? I'm going to uh, strike out with the dog on attacking Cameron. With the bullwhip. Okay. Go ahead and make attack. He is okay. going to be challenging. Challenging. Don't fail. Or don't critically fail. 57. And that 31 succeeds. Okay. Snap! Let's see if it catches it. It's resist. Uh, it does not resist roll 94. So it's kind of chokehold. Roll 1d10 add your bottom bonus. 10. Okay. Uh, well, it can't use one skill right now. Uh, so roll damage is a variant of weapon. Okay. 1d6 plus bronze bonus. Uh, 9. 9? Oh, wait, no, no, I'm sorry. 12. Yeah. It's slain. <laughs> so... He comes up and takes the bull up and literally steps and wraps it around the thing's neck and pulls as hard as he can, lifts the dog up off the ground and snap over his shoulder and the dog falls lifeless with a wet flump to the ground. I actually want to keep a hold of it because I think they're about to shoot. I'm going to use it as a shield. Oh, okay, sure. War, <laughs> uh, anything else you wish to do? Uh, uh, you want to help tear off his feet? Are you AP? Yes. Okay. He reaches down, extends his hand as you're nice. about to be laid upon by the dogs and Pulls you to your feet, Terran, as you're back with the sword and shield and at the ready. And then in... It's one of those where, like, I'm lifted into the air and I land on my feet because yeah. he's, like, so tall and, like, strong. Let's <laughs> <laughs> go. <laughs> yeah, it's not helps you to your feet. It puts you on your feet. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Uh, no... And then there are these gunshots from the pistols. <laughs> Whoops. Crit, fail, crit, fail. As the blasts of the uh, flintlock pistols fire up on all of you. Oh god, they figured out <laughs> semi automatic Boom, boom, boom! <laughs> But well, one of them can't <laughs> That's right. Because I thought people would figure out that we should take up the gun. So, this happens, and um, everyone's in the field of fire for this. I'm going to break one test. You know I made out? Except for you. Yeah. yeah. Uh, that's a Volley fire, fire, guys. It's a 55% it's a, uh, chance. I rolled a 64. I think I'm going yeah, to yeah. roll that. 77. 77. That's a chance for critical failure. 77! Ah, Did you really? really? No way! You it. <laughs> do their guns have the volatile quality? They do. <laughs> the guns, the gunshot doesn't. What happens with the volatile quality? I am quality? a gun. I, I am RNG. Inform us what happens when they all critically oh, fail a test of volley. What's Oh, oh, you roll a D6 chaos. Bad news, bears, isn't it? I am R and Jesus. Bow before me. Uh, <laughs> you roll a D6 chaos. So uh, yeah, I mean we can do that. No, no, that's what the quality does. 
What six. happens when you roll a 1d6 cast? I, I wouldn't know that because I'm just a lawyer, so I ignore the volatile quality. Oh, but otherwise, so okay, when you critically <laughs> fail an attack action or perilous stunt when using weapons with this quality, roll a d6 chaos die. Mm-hmm. On a result of 1 to 5, the weapon misfires, requiring an hour to clean and repair. One. On a face 6, it explodes, dealing 2d10 plus 2. 2d10. So I, so I roll a four. Okay. So they fire the weapons, and they and you hear one explode, like one makes a sound like it's about to shoot, but the other is just kind of this part. lock up as they kind of look at the pistols and then look at you, and they're like, "Oh, they got shit. wet." That's right. They got the wet. All their must have got wet down here. That's right. Yeah. They drop their pistol to this point. Shit! Scramble! Scramble! As uh, as the four of them kind of, you know, they kind of step back behind uh, the pillar, uh, where you can see where you can see them clearly, um, Banneker, and they kind of lean down and draw their sabers at their side as they're kind of talking one another, trying to strategize what they're going to do. We're fucking surrounded! Oh my god, it's the, it's the coppers, you know, like they're not oh my god, like they're, they're conspiring at this point is what you can see. <laughs> so I, look like gi- I like look like the giant Aerodane <laughs> <Yeah>. woman. <laughs> <laughs> so I told you, fools! <laughs> so, Terran, it is your turn. You're on your feet. Uh, Terran is going to charge at them. Okay, oh. so they are nine yards away at this point. <laughs> Sorry, not nine. My apologies. They're 12 away now because they went back behind the pillar. Okay, well, that just happens to be my charge from the, uh, range because I have a movement of six. <laughs> you rush over there uh, around the corner. Uh, and you, as you're kind of jumping into a group of six. Mm-hmm. Five is, is it six is pushing it? How much was it again? Is it what Chauncey say? Four is okay, but five, five is, is pushing, pushing it. That's right. You come into this thicket of grave robbers who are armed with these vicious looking sabers. Uh, your, your, well, your test is probably going to be easy. But your nutsoid. <laughs> ah! <laughs> he comes in with shield and sword. <laughs> Close the distance! To be fair, you do have a, he does have a mortuary sword, which is appropriate, I guess, for this, yeah. right? Yeah. Um, nice. <laughs> and then I'm going to try and uh, attack one of them. Okay, it's easy. Okay, easy will be an 80%. And a 53 will strike. Would you like to strike again? 1 AP? No. Okay. <laughs> Roll damage. Alright. Uh, Would you like to strike again with exclamation? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, one additional for charge. Thank you. Four and six. Oh. Gosh. Well, you know what? Should we? Uh, oh god. Should we turn spinning. it into a six. <laughs> turn it to a phase yeah. six. I'll take that misfortune yeah. point, my friend. Okay, so that one turns into a six. Yes. Yeah. So that's then you get nine. A, so you explode. Explosion, right? That's right. Explosion. <laughs> Another six. Yeah. <laughs> At least you got your money's worth. Another six. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> Definitely got your money's worth. Another six. <laughs> <laughs> Another six. <laughs> What happens when you kill him when he's slain? What happens at the end of your sword? Um, I, uh, I thrust my sword out and I, I get him right in the neck and I, uh... I can strike again. <laughs> I, I, pull, I pull the sword out as he goes, oh, and I swing back around and I finish the job and lop his head clean off and I say, Put your weapons down, mate! As, uh, I, uh, I'm standing there. Okay. You come around the corner, they kind of look toward one another, and they look toward you, and they see the, the one of the fellows, the woman who just lopped her head off, and it's lying on the ground. Ah! <laughs> to the death! They say, oh, to the death! Shit. <laughs> they scream, there's no way out! They're clearly, they feel cornered. Um, so, Taron, you, you, you kill one. Just, just right there. Banneker, it's your turn. <sighs> Like so they're only. Wait, did you have the AP they're 
they six are, away from me because uh, or did they step back? You skirted. Yeah, well, you're right, still you're twelve yards easy. away. I'm twelve yards away. Yes. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and how many are left over there? There are five uh, grave robbers. The head will fall off the roof into the trash can. There's five grave robbers. The good thing is there's not six, because at six they get yeah, the they advantage of an additional d6 damage. Yeah, that's why I was like... Okay, <laughs> Alright, I still have a light one weapon one. in this hand. I guess, stupidly enough, the guy who never goes into battle will charge in Austin. What are you going to use to tackle it? Uh, I have a... Uh, my sword. Okay, so keep in mind that if you attack with an offhand and split the fail, unless you spend an action point to switch No, 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 in my offhand I still have my gun. Uh, you didn't fire with your gun in your offhand. You fire with your gun in your primary hand. Oh, then drop. And switch. So that's one AP to switch, no matter what. Really? Yes. I'll drop everything, pull my bow, and shoot. Okay. So you drop your weapons, it's one AP to draw your bow, one AP to load, and... And same thing. I'm going to do... Uh, range so, take. So, 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 so take them down. Okay, cool. So uh, that's your third action point, you realize that. Yeah. Drop. Yeah. Draw. Load. Shoot. Yep. Uh, it's going to be a hard test. Still firing into melee near him. If you critically fail, you will strike Terwin. It's a hard test? Yes. Okay. Um, let's see. That is 35. I did not critically, but I failed. Okay. <laughs> the arrow kind of whips off the nearby pillar. <laughs> breaking nearby. I thought it was a good idea. I was going to try and mm -hmm. was gonna take him down. Take down is very important. Um, Elisa, it's your turn. Um, so I'm going to, I guess, so dropping a weapon takes an AP? No. No, dropping is free. Switching um, weapons, drawing a weapon, that's okay. one AP. I, well, I'm going to switch to my crossbow and load okay. it. That's one AP. Load is what on that? Two. Two, okay, so three action points. Three. Okay, Harper. Um, I will attempt to. They're twelve yards away. They are twelve yards away. Um, I would not be able to move to engage, but I could move or hustle twice to get closer, and then take a shot at one of these. Good. Yep. How far do you want to go away from them? Uh, like I'll move up ten because right now my movement is five. Right, so five, ten. So you hustle up. You've got your gun loaded. You can't quite aim, but I'll take that shot. Hard test. Yep. Or you three. You have the repeater, right? Yes, I do. That's what I thought. 19 success. He fans it. Okay, roll damage. Alright. Not with that. Just do one. Two plus nine. Nine damage. Oh! Lightly wounded. It's Wings them. Wings this one as he's amid the crowd. I reckon you use words and run. Jonathan, what will you do? Oh boy. I know what I don't want to do, and I know what I've got to do anyway. I'm gonna use my two AP to just hustle twice. Okay. To get up there close, but I'm gonna do it like well, like in a defensive moment the whole time, and then when I get there I will hold. Okay. So do you want to engage them then? I'll move into engagement. Okay, but cool. I'm gonna hold the last right. AP like you. Bring it, you bring up into the ranks with your quarter staff and your breath ready with the others there. Which is going to release with Terwin so far. Right. Um, that brings the hounds are dead. Uh, Warm, that brings us to you. So they're 12 yards away, right? They are around behind the pillar. Okay, I'm going to uh, charge 11 and okay. then uh, use my bullet to try to strike out. Oh. I, have the, I have the reach quality. <laughs> you hear the cracking of the whip kind of over his head, like whistling around and. <laughs> Roll to strike. This is going to be uh, standard. Okay. So that is that a, is that a range weapon or a melee? It's melee. Okay. It's going to be an easy test. Okay. So charge gives you plus ten. It's an easy uh, test. Okay. So easy. Okay. Eighty-seven percent chance to succeed. Uh, ooh, ninety-three. Okay. That's three AP. All right. Okay. Take one, man. Okay. I'm 87% right. chance. I'll take yeah. that misfortune points. <laughs> Three misfortune points, and how many fortune points remain? Two. Two. Okay. 
You can choke and the... His trade he gets for possess is crippling constrictor. Yeah. That's right on the totally money, right. 87. Nice! Okay, okay. so he's gonna try to resist. Uh, zero seven, they resist. Damn. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so nothing happens. If they resist, it's all for naught. He doesn't get to trigger everything with crippling constrictor. So despite the whipping of the, the snapping of the whip and kind of drawing them away, he. But uh, the, the the somehow the, br the the brigand who's who's wearing brigandine armor is kind of like uh, 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 raising her arms. Head. To like not get hit in the face with the or body, and she manages to remain unscathed as she has the saber in hand, and she has a balaclava over her face as to hide their hide who they are. Uh, what one's gonna fall off into scarves that clearly are just fighting for their lives at this point. Uh, Banneker, it's your turn. Uh, My apologies. No, it's their turn. Yeah. Sorry. Um, would you mind marking the hounds off, please? Thank you. <laughs> He's really confused. Okay. Erase the hounds. The good, erase the hounds. Erase the hounds. <laughs> That's good. That's good. Well, well played, sir. Good dad joke. <laughs> or release the hound if you're in view. Uh, so the fir firstly, the you 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 bring the brigands' head clean off Tarwin, and they are gonna just pounce upon you. Okay. Um, the ones that remain. So it's one, two, three, four, five. There's five of them. Um, and they're going to take aim. Uh, so 65. It's 29. And we're going to press the advantage for 55. I'm sorry, strike again. And it's a 65, which is... Does not work. So that's one hit. Well, I think before you do that, don't I need to see if I parry? Uh, uno momento. Okay. Um, let's see roll everything here. Zero one. Okay, so they la they all lash out and only one misses. Oh, you were rolling them all. Okay. Yes. I thought you were so, doing strike again. No, no, no. Okay. So they all hit. So yeah. you want to try to parry with your action point with lightning. With You have lightning yes, reaction, right? I do. Okay. Yes. Otherwise, all right. I'd have none. Okay. All right, so what's the difference? Uh, the test is standard. Standard. Yes. All right, it'll be 70%. And I got a 33 crit success. Nice. Not only does the sword bite into the shield, he manages to pull the, sh the sword out of the brigand's hand and throws the sword across the floor, just as he reaches it, skids across the stone floor as this one's been disarmed. Uh, the others who hit are going to try to press the advantage. Or, sorry, strike again. So the first one's a 55. Success. Second one. It's a 69, it's a miss. Huh? 61, that's what a miss. And 85. So only one managed to strike again. So okay. the blow that you suffered uh, is 6 plus so eight, 9 damage. I am uh, lightly wounded okay. still. King, king. He raises the shield just in time. Ooh, the next one is 6 plus 5, 11 damage. I'm lightly wounded still. Okay. That was close. The next one is yeah, 12. seven damage. Still lightly wounded. And the final one is uh, eight damage. Okay, I'm still lightly okay. wounded. Taron, <laughs> this is why he was nuts over getting some chain guns. Because right. yeah, he knew that he'd be the right. blood of it. Taron basically well, manages to fend all of them off by himself with his here. shield. And even as the sabers bite out toward him as he misses a few of the blows, he still manages to step away, still lightly wounded, which is good. And they kind of look at one another at this point, and they're like, oh shit. <laughs> and I have three action points left, so th so let's see how many break away. Of the, the five that remain, three are going to immediately try to run away. Uh, so if you wish to strike them as they're running away, you can absolutely do that for anyone who's currently engaged in combat. I guess just the two of us. Yeah, uh, Taryn will. Oh, okay, yeah. so are you, because I have got an outside of, I have outside of camp reach. combat with a reach That's weapon. right. Oh. Can't do it. So Taryn's going to strike? Well, I'm there. I'll do it, too. Oh. Because it doesn't require AP to do, right? It's a zero AP. No, zero it's just AP a matter of... Yeah, it's a matter of your, yeah. it's a matter of your character. <laughs> What's your character strength? Yeah. Uh... 
right yeah, now. Yeah, you will. Oh. They just tried to kill you. Yeah, it's 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 completely your call. So I, you know what? I'm in a panic enough. There's enough things going on that I could justify definitely like I've I've been trying to be eaten by rabbit dogs and there's guns firing everywhere. Yeah. Okay. I would defend myself. Okay. Yeah. Terwin. Terwin is full on mayhem. He is going to murder them. <laughs> All if they run. Okay. Uh, the only way they live is if they do what he says. Both of you make an easy <laughs> attack for whatever your attack you're going to use. Red. Easy test, you say? Yes. Right. 80%. 83. 72. I made it by one point. Okay. Oh, two. Success. Okay. Yes. Both of you roll damage. Okay. All right. I did a... Uh, Seven points of damage. Uh, nine. Okay. Uh, one is moderately wounded by uh, Jonathan's blow. Roll 1d6 chaos die. Oh, man. Yep. Breaks like Yeah, that's head. right on the gap. Uh, nothing. No injury. What about, again, the other one you struck is lightly wounded as, as, as they are running away. Okay. Roll d6. Okay, sorry, don't roll anything. Uh, both you gain through corruption. Yeah. Um, <laughs> you strike through the running away. One of them manages to break free. One is still standing there, like, oh shit, they just ran away. The other one, two, I should say, two of them were standing there looking at one another, uh, trying to figure out what the hell to do. Is it gonna look for one another and then look toward you? Their eyes kind of big as tea saucers at this point. Tear what it is your turn. Uh, I'm gonna. I'm gonna point at them with the sword and uh-huh. say, "You want to live? Drop your swords right now and hold still." Clink. They both drop their weapons immediately, like without, without, beyond a shadow of a doubt, they know that they're going to die if they stay here. If they continue fighting, the two of them immediately drop their weapons. The other three have just broken through the tunnels deeper within the undercroft. Uh, Unless any of you wish to give chase. No, I'm not that vicious. I'm not gonna go Professor Violence on them. <laughs> How far did, can they run? Well, they left this chamber into the darkness. That's 12, you know. Okay, so it's 20, 20, 20 feet. It doesn't matter how far they are, it's a question of do you want to get chased? So. Oh. Because you they can have no probably catch, they just ran you can probably place. catch them if you wish to do so. Yeah, I'm good. Yeah, I mean, just there's a the locked darkness. door back there. Right, they can't go anywhere. The door's locked. She couldn't remember. Oh, they didn't know the direction. Yeah, they went from. They went the other oh, way. Oh, I didn't know there was. Yeah, they can't. They, I they it was bro- just a circle room. And yeah, it, they broke through a different end. tunnel as you kind of get spun around in the midst of battle. Oh, okay, I didn't know that. Yes, I thought it dead ended. So. Oh yeah, shit! Yeah. Oh shit! Oh shit! One of them says, and uh, <clears throat> Evan says, "Calm down. You're gonna live. I need you to sit down." I need you to sit down now. Man looks to the woman. And I'm walking up next to Terwin, loading my gun as I <laughs> reload two of the three pistols. Yep. Barrels. I'd recommend you do what this man says. Lisa's gonna unload her crossbow and sling it back over her shoulder. Okay. You kind of close in around them and they kind of drop to their knees and get their hands behind their head at this point. I'm gonna go pick up that other phone while I pistol they got a shot of the day. Go pick it around if we're done posing. Yeah, you <laughs> yeah. Pick it up. You pick up a flip like pistol. Be sure to account for the encumbrance. There's five of them. Is there? Mm-hmm. They each have they all drop them? Them? one blue up. Yeah, one. Right. I'm gonna grab one though, because I'm in encumbrance. Never mind. I ain't picking up any. Y'all pick up. <laughs> as as you're kind of looting at this point, and Terran's got the other side of the sword, you can hear this. So, you all, well, nothing, nothing at this point. I'm sorry, my apologies. Uh, you're looting at this point. I was actually about to say something. What, what uh, were you looking for? I was, uh, I'm gonna look at one of you. I'm gonna look at you three, and I'm gonna say someone needs to keep watch in case they decide to come back. I'm better at talking than I am. I can watch. I can watch. All right. I'm, I'm gonna slip uh, a pistol in Warren's belt. As you all are quite filtering sensitive. amid what's there. 
was a goat? You hear this <laughs> sound coming from somewhere deeper inside this place. Somewhere within the shadows and they kind of stop like freezing. They kind of both look over their shoulders toward the dark tunnel where the others ran away. You know what that is? They kind of, you can see them all visibly shaking at this point. What are you doing down here? What do you think we're doing down here? He says. You can see all the riches laying before them that they have stolen from not only here, but from other places deeper within. I'm going to start looking through those bags and see if there's anything of interest. <laughs> so you have no idea what that noise is? We have no... You alright? Oh, yeah, you <laughs> like bone. The not so funny wow. bone? Son of a... Yep, I'm good. I think it's just a high chew for that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. have a high chew, you'll feel better. You begin rooting through the bags, and clearly they have begun to save st- stolen stuff that's been interred here with whoever was buried. A number of riches. Mm-hmm. I'm still for the day. I'm really not at my best down here. No, no one is. No. So what? Uh, you guys know how to get uh, down Marin's gate. Hey, kind of over here, back toward you. Al Marin's gate. You see the, 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 le- the light in the lamps begins to flicker as if wind is passing through the panes of glass. The lights flicker for a moment, almost threatening to wink out. They kind of come bright once again. There's two of you. I only need one of you to talk. So you better start talking. The dead. The shadows. They hold these halls. We keep the light close. He looks toward the lantern. It wards them away. Well, good thing we've got more light. Can, can you lead us down there in this gate? They, one of them nods as he points <laughs> down, as he kind of nods with his head toward a nearby tunnel. All right, we'll pick your lantern up and let's go. You guys can come back for this later. That's got nothing to do with us. Oh, uh, I don't think we should go down there, he says. The woman looks toward him as well. But that's the way to our man's gate, isn't it? Yeah, the woman says. But that's where the ghost is. Ghost. Ghost. We got blinks his eyes. Yeah, sorry, I'm a low bone. The shades are everywhere in the tunnels. So then what, we sit here? I'm, I'm just curious what your end of plan is then. What do you want with us? Al Baron's Gate? Yeah, that's what we want. That's where we're headed. Turn your lights up bright. Swords, no stones, no gunshot will hurt them. The shadow of the shades cling at the edge of the light. You'll see them. You'll feel them in the cold. All right. Uh, Terran, so to those that would know, I mean, Terran's mainly just trying to listen to what they say uh, just so that he can continue talking Mm -hmm. but also not like try and deny them anything they're saying um he's trying to use a tactic to get them to uh, tell him what he wants um establish what small sense of trust you can (laughs) from murdering their friends we know the Um, way out of here the woman says don't like we have much of a choice take you to Almeron's gates, but it's, there's a reaping going on. What, like the Inquisition? The woman nods her head. Oh, 
That choice was forfeited when you attacked us. I did say go there. I tried to be friendly. What are you implying at this point? That you're going to kill them? Just to be clear about no, board. No, no. Um, be clear with what you're saying as I'm asking. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So he says that, and he says, now in order to atone for that, uh, you can lead us the way, and you can keep your miserable life. The path around there the gates us through the crypt, the man says to the woman. We have no choice, she says to him. That's what the shades are. You sure you want to do that, he says, looking toward you. And he seems earnest in all of this. At that point, uh, Terran's just going to get a little frustrated, and he's going to look at everyone else like... Yes, we've already said that's what we want. Everyone else is spending their time picking through the loot and taking what they want. Do you want to just basically pick up everything they've kind of taken through the crypts at this point? No. no she's not taking anything unless there's something of, like real interest or rarity. There's a lot of value here. There's gemstones, there's jewels, there's ornate there's ornate there's ornate looking rods and staffs. She's not there are tiaras, there are bangles, there are necklaces. They've literally looted the dead. Yeah. She and wouldn't sacks, take sacks of this. She sacks. wouldn't take anything that is necessarily valuable just for value's sake. If there was mm-hmm. something like It's all very intriguing given the fact it's from probably a different age. So pro- uh, if there's a couple pieces that might be of historical value. She's got room for about two small items. Okay. Anybody it, else? It seems that Warren's uh, decadence um, <laughs> has taken the better of him, <laughs> and uh, he decides to adorn himself in, in the most glorious finery he can find <laughs> among, amongst the loot. <laughs> Fair enough. Yeah, Elisa is looking for historical significant stuff. Not necessarily it's right. worth the most so, money. To be though. clear, just I'm going character by character. Jonathan Vander, what of yourself? I'm definitely not going to take any of the uh, anything from the pilfering, though. I think we should uh, gather up their discarded pistols. Did anyone say that? Yeah, I already got those. Uh, you you want one? Those? No, I don't want it. I just didn't want to leave it here. I figured those are forfeit to us. Yeah, I don't know how to use that. So, what of your what of your self banter? Uh, you wish to take the riches that they have stolen from the no. crypts? I'm gonna take, uh, no, the, take, take like I said, I took their the firearms. The yeah. firearms. I gave one to Warren. <clears throat> so we'll 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 re inventory right. in just a moment. I'm just yeah. clarifying, That's just it. to be very direct. Who is taking what from their sack? Are you taking anything from the sacks that they nope. looted? I, I wouldn't do that. Terran? No, Terran will not take anything that was like entombed. Okay. He he has no he has no problem picking the bodies we killed, mm-hmm. but he will not take anything from the entombed. And yourself, Harper? Harper is not going to take anything. Uh, he would actually be interested in like doing some like last rites for the one that was beheaded. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So. Okay. So, uh, you begin to kind of gather things and pick through what they've taken, and those who steal from the dead gain through corruption. Um, in return, however... Uh, which dead? Uh, okay. This would be Elisa and Warren. Okay. Oh, okay. Uh, Elisa and Warren, both of you roll 1d6 chaos die. Mm-hmm. Since I'm, st- I'm going towards my decadence, do I actually gain corruption? You gain, you gain three corruption already. Okay. Curse. There's a six. Yeah. <laughs> At least four. four. I was surfing. Why do you get the fun thing? <laughs> <laughs> I kind of wonder. Who said Sir. you needed a six? Sir. Oh, that's true. Four. Fine. One. <laughs> that's the curse of the mummy. The curse of the mummy costs you a lot of money. It costs you a ton of money. <laughs> money, money. Money, money. <laughs> the money, money. Yeah, yeah. So you will fell in love with me. You fell in love with me. So I'm, I'm going back to my opportunistic so upbringing. To, 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 so here's what they bring in space they have on them. Uh, they have five shot each. Nice. They each have sabers. Uh, the ones that are still here and alive have brigandine armor. Uh, and they, a few of them have wanted letters with their own face upon it for some manner of um, bounty uh, to be had. Uh, the dogs, of course, are have heavy leather collars. And the houndsman has been, houndswoman, I should say, was slain. Her head was taken clean off. 
We didn't come from Almeron's gates, the man says. We came from the lower city. You go that you go to to get to Almeron's gate, you have to go to the crypts. I don't are you sure you want to do that. You know more about it than we do. We need to get to Almeron's gate. He's a you know, friend of mine up there. Gotta get him out. The woman kinda looks toward him and says, well, we kinda know the way. She says, and kind of, she kind of issues with her elbow, and she has her hands are still above behind her head, toward her satchel nearby, where as you get inside and kind of pull it open, you can see these rudimentary looking maps. Ah. Well, you two are just quite helpful. Now pick up the lantern and let's go. I, uh, uh, Harper wears leather, right? Yeah, Harper does wear leather. Mm-hmm. Sure, you don't want nothing like that. Because he points to the brigandine. Mm. Murder hobos. <laughs> That's what we do. <laughs> well, let's see if they got anything in my size. You want to take their boots. One was killed. I should say the hounds one was killed and has a set of brigandine. The other two who are hostage have their brigandine. The others ran off. But that's enough for any of them look frail. Let's find out. <laughs> Roll percentile das. Roll once. Fifty-eight. One moment. Go find out. That's that gonna roll real frail. Well. That's gonna be normal, I think. Yep. I think it's fifteen. Not uh, even close. <laughs> <laughs> so the uh, first one is normal. Yep. That's the dead one. Uh, 76, I'm gonna guess that's That is a husky fellow. Husky. Oh, one! <laughs> and a frail woman. Yes. Hey. The other one. She has her hands behind her head. Alright. Well, uh. I mean, I wouldn't wanna make a woman rock around naked. She's got clothing, and you can give her your leather. I guess that's fair. She. <laughs> she shakes her head and, and says. It won't matter what you wear, the shades. Oh no, it matters when we're beyond the shades. The man looks toward the woman. Please, whatever your names are. I'm begging you, he stands up and kind of holds his hands out in contrition. You can't go to a thing, you can't go to the crypts. It's a fool's errand. Okay. Do you know a better way yeah. in? Is there is another way to Almond's Gates unless you go top street. I could take you top street. Okay. But you still have to go through the blockade. The, the blockade is the problem. That's the whole reason we're here. So we have to do this. I didn't sign up for this, the woman says to the man. She, he turns toward her. What's your name? Oh, my name? It's Terwin. He, he nods. It's Conrad Drummond. Listen to me. It's just a misfortune and misunderstanding. You clearly came here for... Same purposes of us, says he. You can see that Warren has adorned himself head to toe in, in fucking <laughs> jewels, and you can still see Elisa picking through things and shoving them into her satchel. What are you doing? It's a misfortunate understanding. Listen. We can't. Let's do this. Give us. Give us a third of the loot, and we'll give you the map, and we'll be on our way, and we'll, we'll give you the map and the rest. Two thirds in the map. You don't get the bargain. Pick up the lantern and let's go. Show us the way, then you can do whatever you want with this other trash. And you too. Well. Leave that shit. Have some respect. What? This could be studied. This is very interesting, you know. And it'll still be here. The woman nods, agreeing. There's people in this above who buy these things, traffic in these things on, on the lower city. We know a fence, we know a man. I'm not looking at this for money. This is purely from an educational standpoint. Yes, uh, a man on the river, yeah, of course, he deals in these things. Jonas Sparrow! They kind of nod toward one another. Mm-hmm. Jonas, Jonas Sparrow, he deals in these sort of antiquities. And how, and how are you able to speak with him if he's in the blockade? He's in the blockade? man says. Yeah, that's why well, we heard. That's why we're going there, is to, is to find him. Well, then we got no way. So clearly we have aligned interests. Just to, listen, Terwin, look, let's face the facts. We're here for the same thing, but you're going, want to go to a really dangerous place. 
heed my words, and I'm, I'm telling you, you should not go. Th let's do this. Uh, one half the loot, and the map is yours, and we will take the rest, and we'll be on our way. Uh, no harm done. I mean, we are You're just friends with Jonah Sparrow, right? You just want a th we we just lost the. We were going to give you a third. Now you're going to take half. No, 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 no. You take two thirds, and we'll take a third. I don't want any of it. I want you to get me to Jonah. Jo. I don't know where Jonah's at. You said he's in the blockade. Yes, that's why we need to get there. We're not going to Almeria. This is madness. Oh if you do, if you don't make it through the crypts and you make it into the streets, well, you'd like to be put on a funeral pile and burned alive. Well, let me ask you this: If you sell these things to Jonah, how the hell are you gonna get to Jonah unless you go with us? <laughs> I don't think Jonah's gonna be doing business in the middle of the blockade down there. In the case, things are a little bit more dire there. I, think, I mean, right now. for a smuggler, that's exactly where you want to be, where things are least supply and most demand. Well, clearly, you don't understand what a smuggler does. He a smuggler takes goods under the guise of being legit goods back and forth in the river. They don't go to districts to steal. That's what we do. Right. <laughs> so you go there with this stuff, and he takes it out, and he makes money off it, right? Can I just state they're not going to be useful at this point? How are you planning on meeting up with him? Jonah? Yes. I was going to meet him in a couple weeks' time. A couple of weeks. We don't have that time, do we? No, we don't. So we need to see him. Well, I can't take you to him. I don't know what the hell it is in Almeron's Gate. I can't tell you exactly where it's at. I told you I don't know, he just says, admitting. And I told gate. you exactly, like I did five minutes ago, I do know. So we're not going to Almeron's Gate. Gate. That's madness. madness. You're not listening. You're Please, not Terwin, not. talk some sense into this this man. It's a fool's errand. Take the map and take take all the, take it all. Take the loot. Just let us leave with, at least with the sword and the something. Keep our guns. Just... Give us the sword and our armor. At least we can make it through the streets when we leave in the lower city. But take all we've taken. It's a fair exchange. Are they really in a position to be bargaining right at this moment? Maybe I'm misunderstanding something. Well, no honor among thieves, the woman says. I'm not a thief. I'm an armed thief. Right, the woman says. As she looks to... Both Elisa and Warren. <laughs> and, uh, and I'll say it again as I'm looking at them and said, we're not thieves. Look, I'm, no Elisa. judgments right. here, the man right. says. No judgments at all. Elisa sighs and pulls the stuff from I'll the bag actually, and puts like, it hold down. It. Listen, I think it's become clear that whatever they think is down there, they're more afraid of it than they are of you. Here's what, I, here's what else I'm thinking. The amount of rackets you, you two would be making, and with the nerves that you have, which I am halfway inclined to have myself. Well, I'm not very scared to be here, so if the shades are here, turn uh, up your lights. I think they were less scared when there was nine of them mm -hmm. than they are when there are two. I know one thing. Just switching out your arm with Arthur. I don't need their arm with that bad. I wouldn't want to take a woman. But please, the, the shades, the, it won't matter, the woman says. It's just I, I don't need it. it. I I'm moving her clothes. I moving her armor, I should I, say. I, 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 no, no. This, this is how you're earning your freedom. That's Harper's compassion. It's like, no, here, here, take, take the map. Like he just hands it to you. <laughs> yeah. Take take it all. We just we just want our swords and we'll be on our way. An unfortunate misfortune understanding. No harm done. Right. Terran, right? We will take the map. Yes. We will take her armor. You'll get his. Uh, 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 <laughs> really, I don't need it. It's fine. Just let her woman keep her clothes. We get, we, we, with the money we got from these guns, I can buy Wait. myself better than what you got. If you run around naked under your armor, then perhaps we shouldn't make an exchange. Just, just let it go, Terran. Just let them go. We'll take the loot. That way they can't come back and just take it. We'll find someone for better hands for it. We ain't no thieves. But we ain't gonna let it get stolen, are we? Right, well, if, it's, if we're all doing what we want, we're all doing what we want. You two may leave and give me that map. All right, okay, he just hands it to you. All right. We're just gonna take our souls real 
Real careful. No, no, no. Walk ten feet that way. Man looks at the woman kind of uncertain says, he nods. Well, you need that lantern, too. You can't wander around the dock down here. You um, like to stumble and break your neck. So then I, once they're ten feet away, I'll bring them the lantern. I'll walk mm. back over and I'll... And I'll Alisa walks over. I have a torch. They need the torch light. burns for ten minutes. We need that lantern. It's got five five hours of oil in it. It's the torch burns for an hour, doesn't it? It's their lantern. I hand them their lantern, and then I slide the swords over with my feet. Once I'm back ten feet across. The man and the woman, one mildly wounded, one lightly wounded, still nursing their wounds. No harm done. You didn't see us, and we didn't see you. Not among thieves. Take all that. We all leave. No problems. Oh, whatever. Swear by the red man. Just take it out. <clears throat> swear by the man in red. Uh, no, no, no vindiction. He shields it. He sheathes his sword and she does too. The more you talk, the less I believe you. Best Excuse you leave. <clears throat> they take the lantern and they kind of disappear into the darkness. Oh, that was something. It's worth us. Yeah. It makes you feel better. I won't take anything, but it was of interest, possibly from an academic standpoint. Terran's holding a map in hand. Take it. What? Um. Take it all if you want. Seems there was a class on ethics that happened right when we had those two, but now they leave and that's gone. No, 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 no. Um, I think it was I, good to send them on their way. Obviously. I think as soon as we got to Amaran's gate, they were going to be noisy a distraction and potentially cause us a lot of problems. Right. Yeah, they can we get better to be us away them. from that area. Normally, when someone <laughs> would make a statement of this, it would be laden with poison. Or, But I mean this in the most genuine sense. We have differing opinions on what should be done. If you want to take this, that's on you. I'm not going to do it. See, I, I think there's a problem here, bosses. Maybe you should let somebody else ask. How did they get to the gate? They might have a fucking key. May have solved half of our problems. They've done fairly well getting us through. No, no, no. I'll pat down the Houndmaster since she seemed to be the one in the lead. Does she have any keys on her? No keys, but a set of lockpicks. Okay. I'll grab the extra set of lockpicks and throw them to. No, just maybe that was wrong then, boss. All I gotta say is let's lock this, take this loot, lock it back behind there. And when we leave, we can we can throw it back in this room, and what happens later happens later. It's got nothing to do with us. Good point and well made. I can always bury it in that hole we crawl through. Uh, I mean, I wouldn't do that. That's still the, I I have problems. I have been on an, enough side missions to know that we're probably not going to come back this way. All right. Something's going to happen up above. Of course. And we're probably going to run into yeah. Inquisitors, and we're going to have to escape via boat. So... Well, that was my planning. I'm not going back this way. I was you going to say, to I don't feel bad about it. Leaving with a boat will be much easier than coming in at once. Right. right. So, if you're going to take... Who cares if we're noticed when we leave? <laughs> if, if you're going to take something, <laughs> then you're taking it. But if I'm not carrying it, Honestly, it'll weigh me down at this point. I'll keep the lockpicks. They'll probably be more useful. Some of you have taken to it surprisingly well. Ooh. Why, it suits you. And then he shut. He visibly shudders after that. <laughs> and we should probably end here for the night. Yes. <laughs> you do <laughs> know, be... know that it does seem very out of character for Warren to do such to want oh, stuff. No, he yeah. want He's very superstitious. Yeah. Right. Yes. And he wants boobs, not jewels. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so, Was there any port down here? <laughs> uh, One hundred reward points. Uh, for this evening. Uh, and we will continue putting members next week. So let's do a corruption roll. Obviously, we need to wrap up for the night. That's the last step here. And uh, our corrupt, good corruption tonight. What do you have, Harpa? Anything? I got like three, I believe. How many guys? I have three. I'm still in line. Uh, uh, I have three? Banneker? Huh. Uh, six. Okay. Elisa? Uh, three. Uh, Banneker? Wow. 15. Oh, God. 
<laughs> so one chaos strike automatically. Yeah. The five that remains, it's rolling inside. <laughs> uh, so the corruption roll for tonight is roll, uh, four. two. Oh, 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 corruption. Two corruption. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, yes, down the path. So, we will continue next week with Queen of Evers. Thank you all for watching. Thank you for tuning in. Thanks for coming, guys. This is a good time. This is fun. Uh, see you next week. Bye. 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 Bye.